I got a one. Oh. <laughs> I got a one, Mac got a two. <laughs> That's hilarious. I got a two as well. That's so funny. That's great. We're average. We are average. Does that, if I do my math correctly, that's one and a half. It's been a while use... since I had good rolls. So, can I just use my initiative bonus to give me a three? No, <laughs> I'm using my per, uh, my uh, inspiration to re-roll. If that, if you do that's that, that's hilarious. No one likes doing recaps, so you just like bomb the rolls during the game to get away. <laughs> Uh, well, my notes that I sent myself are also sort of uh, not very coherent either, so that's good. Oh, well, I I got I got notes. I got I got. Oh, I'm gonna have to have notes. notes. It's not a lack of literal notes that's holding me back. It's meaningful notes that uh, have actual information in them. Oh, I got plenty of information. <laughs> I gotta get a oh. fan or something. I'm so sure. Matt, give us give us that give us that recap. Wait, did you? No, it's Chris is up. Oh, Chris, it's me. Yeah. I got a one. Okay. That's I got a one, you and gotta, you both got twos. You got to do two recaps, Chris. I did one last time. <laughs> well, and essentially, I'm doing two since I go from Chris to Wilbur back and forth. That's <laughs> true. Sure. So, um, it all started last week when I got a cool point for doing a really cool recap. That's how last week started. That's true. <laughs> so we came to into the Underdark and realized that we didn't just take a long rest on the beach in a nice, relaxed, comfortable place before <laughs> going into the random spot in the Underdark. So we took a short rest. Um, we started moving around. We see some crystals and some weird mushrooms. Um, and I know we killed some things. I forget what mm -hmm. we killed. Some spiders, maybe? I think it was spiders. Killed something. Um, and then we, uh, pushed forward and we saw an old settlement. Uh, had a rock slide on one side, uh, looked deserted. There were some green potions hanging from, like, lanterns that had, like, a glow to them. Started exploring, uh, people figured out it was, a uh, the, um, it was like a slave trading outpost, like a transfer station mm -hmm. or something. And uh, as we're exploring, uh, we see a treasure chest. And we, of course, we start going towards it. And a clay golem pops out and starts trying to fuck us up. Of course, we start doing our thing, um, killing it. And then Sir Sprock, mimic, or no, Sir Sprock, mind flayer friend, pulls out his magic magical glorious wand and turns a clay golem into a poop mimic. No, he polymorphed <laughs> him into a poop mimic. I forgot about That's that. Right. I did forget about that. <laughs> so we're like, all right, this thing is a giant pile of poop. So we're going to leave and we just left. Um, yeah, we didn't even deal with him, right? No, we just left a giant pile of poop back there. A oh, poop God. mimic. Yeah. I feel like that's coming uh, back. Oh, it is 1,000% coming back, along yeah. with Crack and Lone Star. Uh, we find some more crystals and doors. Um, uh, Lone Star touches a crystal, and uh, Ignis walked through it. And as soon as Ignis walked through, the door shut, and the crystal sucked into the ground. And then so we did that for everyone else, and then Sprock was the last person. As soon as Sprock's crystal sunk into the ground. The last fourth one sunk into the ground. Another door opened. Sprock walked through that door. We're all alone on our paths. Ignis was far away from her long lost love of Wilbur. Um, Wilbur! Aaron has found a forge, decided not to do a damn thing about it, found some spiders, and then found this forest with something in it at the end that I don't remember. Some mush no, uh, some mushrooms in it. I think. I believe That's that is correct. I don't, I yeah, don't remember giant mushrooms. Um, I also, I um, I also uh, um, distracted the spider and then broke its cocoon and got a piece of metal shard that I need to the forge for. The forge something, yeah. That is, yeah. Um, 
Ignis found uh, a giant gaping hole and decided to jump over it and land mm -hmm. on the ladder and then found out there's a ladder on the other side and climbed down the ladder and went down into this magical cave area and decided to start exploring from there. Magical cave right. of wonder. Yeah. Uh, Sprock. Uh, Although so far it's just an empty cave of nothingness, but yes. <laughs> Sprock found a whole lot of blood and a blood trail. Found a, a naked gnome from Stristrad or whatever <laughs> you're calling it. Um, it says, it's written down here as Stristad. I said there's mm -hmm. more gnomes like him scattered throughout this Underdark that he's trying to find or that were with him. Uh, and then he starts walking through and this creature starts coming out and they they get some uh, they get some naughty time together. Uh, in the meantime, while that's happening, Wilbur comes into this room and there's a bunch of shit on the ground, some mushrooms all over the place. He goes to try and jump over some of them and kicks onto one and all of a sudden he can fly. He gets a 60 foot fly speed. Right. He flies over. I don't over remember to that. Did you make that part up? I don't remember you being able to fly. Well, you'll know he'll remember you'll remember he'll be able to fly coming up here shortly. And <laughs> if you'll just listen right there after the short message. <laughs> from our sponsor <laughs> flying mushrooms the mushrooms that'll make you fly <laughs> okay. i guarantee it <laughs> and he went and found a chest and it got some gold and a note that had the number sign and 98 written on it and then he started flying some more went about with that went down another path and came across all these eggs, this weird mountain of eggs, and a hole, a hole in the ground that went down and a hole in the ground that went up. And started to go down, then decided he wants to go up and he started flying up through the hole. And that's how you know he can fly. And I got another cool point for something. And that's yeah. where we left off. Oh, fuck. Okay. Um, all right, so, so I'll be in there in a bit. Roll initiative to see who in what order we're going to be doing this. Okay. Uh, give me a sec. I got to get Gloomhaven off because it's going to slow everything the fuck down. Just roll initiative. So, nerd. So we know. 11. Oh, plus five. Eight. 16. 19. Oh, nice. It's nice to have an advantage. <laughs> Chris got 15. Yes. Matt, what'd you get? Eight. And Jake got an automatic fail. Okay. And Matt is in. All right. So, Chris, you're up. So, you decided to go up. Yes. Okay. I'm loading up simulator right now because it yeah, it's really cool. bogs on my computer. Um, so you fly, so you are in this uh, room, um, and what you could tell, there were eggs, um, and then there was a, there was a sort, of, sort of like a, uh, not necessarily a wormhole, but very similar. Uh, obviously, something had chiseled this. It's not a natural made hole, um, yeah. and you decided to fly up, um, yeah. and when you're traveling through, it's completely dark, very, very dark. But then you start seeing um, similar looking light um, from where you just were. So dark light, but light less. Mm -hmm. um, and as you get to the top area, um, you come across a, a room. Um, now, when you're flying up, are you going to go slow? Or are you going to go fast? Well, if I see something coming towards me, if I like see a room, I'll go slow and approach stealthily and try as and like you, peek over the edge. As you get closer to this room, you just feel like static. Your hair starts to maybe you don't have enough, your scales start to lift up off your um, off your skin like a like. Perhaps there's a magical element, maybe, or 
some sort of static electricity. Electromagnetic Where is that hole? Is that around right here? Yeah, yeah, that's the hole. Okay. That's the hole, baby. So as I like peek my head out, I'll try and be as close to this inside edge of the wall as I can and just do a little quick alligator peek over the edge. Give me a um, perception check. Okay, perception. Here we go, baby. 18. So you poke your head up, you're really quiet, and, and uh, your your bodies, everything you touch is is popping with ecstatic electricity. Mm -hmm. You poke your head up and you see a dead a dead body um, in a statue. Um, you see that the there's a, some somewhat of a force field around this area, probably about a 20 by 20 um, force field. And in the center, there's a statue and a, and a, and a dead body that you can't, you can only presume is dead as you see blue blood um, and a little bit of blue skin. Um, you can't really make anything else out. You do see, because you rolled such a high perception, that there's three there are two other exits no sorry there's three exits to this room um they go off into you think is 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 downward because when you mm -hmm. look up you see a 60 foot uh ceiling um sort of cave like and then it, off in the corner there's another there's a cave entrance um and then you can see the wall but nothing up or down um you can see okay. that there's a void sort of like the hole that you had but a lot larger same thing okay. over in the other corner. And the green area, it's liquid. Uh, it's sm and it smells like like mildewy mold okay. in the room. That's if I don't see anyone else besides that dead body and it looks like a like this barrier is visible to me. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll try and like creep around hovering just barely off the ground. Um, to try and see if I get see who that is, if I recognize that as Brock or not. Um, as you get closer to this, you're not going to go into the force field. No, no, the, he's he stays away from magic. Okay, so uh, he's not going to fuck with that. You see, there is a dead. Um, have you? Yeah, you, you've seen mind flares. So there's a dead mind. Oh, I, I, I saw Sprock. There's a, yeah, well, you saw, you also saw Thesduzos. Yeah, I saw Thesduzos. There's, there's a dead Thesduzos looking body, um, and his head has been cut open. Um, oh, no. There's a blue mind flare, um, and there's blue blood all around him. As you get closer, you see that in the middle, next to the, um, next to the mind flare is a, uh, a <coughs> Okay. Well, seeing as I don't see anyone there, and I don't want to get completely lost, I'm going to go back down and then check out the down below. Okay. Go um, back. I'll take note of where this is and just float back down. Okay. All right, uh, Aranus. What up, no? You are up. Okay. So if I remember correctly, I made that turn down uh, memory lane. My yeah. trip. I went into yeah, exactly that way. Um, this this way. Yeah. Okay. Um. Just keep it there. I tried to make these snap two grids, but they don't work. Um, okay, so you turn and you look, you have your metal object, you uh, creeped by a spider. Um, there he is, did not see you. Um, and as you were entering this uh, mushroom field, just real quick, the uh, the shard that I have, right? It's like small, right? So it's not what it's not enough to make the sword. Not enough, no. Okay. At a third. Okay. Um, 
you give me a perception check. Before you make this turn, give me a perception check. I'm gonna open up that three points. Uh, 19. Okay. Um, you can see into both rooms. Um, so you have, to, you have to make your decision. Uh, you can remake it if you want. One room, uh, the red room, has cobwebs all over it. Um, there's another one of those bodies in the in the corner of the room. Okay. And I'll draw that here. And the other room has um, can't quite make out any detail in it. Um, it seems to be calmer than than the last couple rooms. Maybe Can less. I see what the red, red is. Huh? Can uh, I just, see what the red, the red's just a just a color I made the thing. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, okay, then if I see another cocoon, I'm going to uh, carefully and stealthily head towards it. Okay. Um, as you go through, so you're so you're going to the cobwebs are. Let's just say it's just random. Now there's ways to get around these cobwebs. You're um Hey, why did my health get so low? Because we that? didn't rest. Yeah, yeah oh. we haven't rested. Right, 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 right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Sorry, go ahead. So you're aware of spiders from your travels, and you know that if you jiggle a web, um, chances are you're gonna be signaling your position um away. Okay, um, so I am going to, uh, <laughs> do I see, oh, 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 these are the, okay, cool. So let me see, oh, let me turn this on. All right, so I am going to, yeah, I stealthily like make my way through this stuff, through the the fungus, the mushrooms, fungus, yes. And um the cocoon. Uh the okay, so uh are is there space between um the 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 spider webs that are stretched across? Yeah. So well, you could Give me a perception check. I'm going to roll this. Uh, 23. Okay. So you can see the spaces that you need to go through. You see that the first one, you can go under. The, the second one, you can go over. And then the last one is just a wall. There's no real way around it. Perhaps you want, you, you might have to cut it or use some sort of magic to get, to get through. Okay. Um... If that is think entrapment, think entrapment. Thelma Hayek's ass. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, basically, I'm. Uh, <laughs> I am going to. Let's make it easy for you. Um, the reds are the are your objects. Objectives. I don't understand. Where did I put? Where did I put? Oh, this is important. On the wall of web that's hanging next to the body, there seems to be a pouch of some kind, um, like a leather looking pouch. Oh, shit. I have a leather pouch from before, huh? Uh, hmm. Okay. I am. Just gonna fucking run in. Just <laughs> that's what you want. There's no. treasure in there. Go for it. You know you want to. No, I don't understand. My equipment doesn't look right. I feel like I'm missing because I I know I added the metal piece, but I don't see it on my thing. Um, it was a all right. I guess I'll just add it now. 
Uh, give me one sec. Sorry, I just I have to. You're good. Because I also have the the hilt that was there. Um, okay, so I am going to cut this. Oh, wait, you know what? Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna cut it. Um, I'm going to use, um, I'm gonna pull out my Tinder box. Um, I'm going to I'm going to burn this web. I'm going to start a little fire. Mm. Burn this wall of web. Wow. So I'm going to I'm going to do I'm going to do the um super cool spy movie in the laser grid through these two with the most stealthy uh, acrobatic routine you've ever seen. I mean it's it's crazy. You should have seen it. Let's roll for it. <laughs> okay, cool. That's I'll, nice uh, I'm gonna use truth. Stealth and acrobatics? Yes. All right. Acrobatics roll is 31. Oof. Stealth and a roll. performance to see how sexy you are. Yeah. Mm, Agreed. <laughs> Stealth roll is 22 and performance is 10. Okay. So 31, so, 22, and 10. Okay, so you sneak through the first one. Um, you sort of get caught in the second one, but not enough. Just gently squeeze by without causing anything to move. And once I feel a little bit on me, I turn and give it blue steel. And your 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 performance though is ten, so it looked like it looked shitty. The whole the whole thing just kind of looked like everyone that would all I did was turn to that. Everyone that would have watched this was like, oh my God, he's going to get caught. But somehow, yeah, <laughs> like watching the fat guy steal second. Um, but say, so you get there. Yeah. He, he, he tripped um, over a rock as he started to go in and just sort of stumbled through the first two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I'm, I'm Mr. Bean my way through. Um, <laughs> there's a, uh, there's a pouch that's stuck in this web in front of you. Oh, the, the pouch is in the web, not next to the body? Oh, no, no. It's, in the, it's in the web. OK, so I'm going to set the web separate, off from the separate body. from the body, but still in the web. Got you. I'm going to set the, oh, so I'm going to use my tinder box and a little bit of oil. And I'm going to set, so I'm going to like spritz, spritz some, uh, a little bit of oil on, like around the base of the wall of web, away from, like directly underneath where the pouch is. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to set that on fire. So the web and the guy inside of it start to burn. But um, wait, I thought you said the cocoon was separated from the wall of web. The cocoon, the cocoon has the is is uh, in the web, but there's there's separate from like they're separate in the web, right? Oh, uh, I don't think you. I mean, I don't think you, I get what you're saying, but. Yeah, so I thought it was separated because I don't want to burn it if it's not separated. I thought there was like a wall of web and then there was a cocoon behind it. Okay. Um, we'll play it as you thought. So how so the web is the web with the, the, the case in it or whatever is separate from the cocoon. That's fine. So you burn so you burn the, the web in front of you. Are you gonna burn the cocoon the uh, the case? So I want to, so as, as the fire gets closer to the case, I'm going to pull out my, uh, how high is the, how high right, is it? Right in front of your face. Oh, so yeah, I'm going to use um, a dagger. And as the fire gets close to the bottom, I'm going to do a quick slit at the top to catch it and catch it. Okay. Um, give me slide a slide of hand. Yeah, slide of hand. And you're catching fire. 19, baby. How you play it out is exactly how it happened. Now, you get one coolness point. Um, nice. For your fire. Um, <laughs> keep track of your coolness points. Of course. Um, Chris, you get zero fire. coolness points. Uh, I get what coolness points? You got zero coolness points. 
Um, more. So you give me a quick perception, and I'll tell you what's in what you've found. Uh, all right. Yeah. Now that I'm using this, I'm like, I'll just keep using it. And twenty-one. You have found a map of the area. Um, oh, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> to be a map, um, you're not really sure what area you're in, but you can sort of make out uh, the area um, where there was, a, there was a cross in the road where everyone went, the room of uh, engagement, mm -hmm. uh, where everyone got separated. Um, you see that um, written on that is uh, some sort of uh, incoherent notes, um, but you can make out the, the traveler's objective, which was to find um, the objects of, a, of, of Moroses's objects. Moroses's um, Moroses objects. All right, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, there's a sword. There's a white mushroom flower. Uh, there's a crown. And there's um, an azomite, an azomite, uh, uh, chest plate um, and on that note it says that the chest plate's made out of azomite some sort of crystal the crown um, there's a question mark um, but there is a uh, chest drawn um, next to the crown with the number 97 on it and 95 on it 97 and 95 on the crown for the crown yes cool um, and, uh, there's a sword, um, and on that sword, in, he has, a. he said, there's a sword with a check mark. Seems to, to be that, and it's circled, seems to be that this traveler was looking for something that, that maybe you are also looking for. Gotcha. Um, and there is a, uh, and flower, a body there. Okay, so I am, uh, all right, so first things first. Did the fire burn up the rest of the web and stop on the cave walls or is it now on fire? The, the, all the web in the, in the room is, is, uh, has burnt and singed off. Okay, then I want to, um, similar to what I did with the last dude, I wanna use Mage Hand to bridge the cocoon. Okay. Um, so you, what are you doing exactly? You're gonna cut it? Yeah, I'm using, um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put a dagger in my mage hands, um, in my mage hand and then send it to, to open the cocoon. Okay, uh, the cocoon slice is open. This is Crosby. Crosby failed a deck save, causing him to get smashed by a giant alchemist in the Shadowhide realm. Don't be a Crosby. Roll high and subscribe. And you hear this, <gasps> oh. 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 oh shit you're alive you almost got me oh right. i'm gonna reach up and and help the dude out okay um you find this ugly worn out fucking crazy looking um no um and he's really fucked up he doesn't look uh, doesn't look right. His body's shaking. Um, he's got different colored eyes. He's bleeding from his left eye. He's got scars all over him, burn marks. Um, and he's, he says, "Oh, they had me there." And we're like, "Who's they?" The spiders. That, uh, the spiders, I think. Who are you? Are you not a spider? Are you no, one I'm of not us? A spider. I he might looks, be. He looks at you right in the eye. He says, Are you one of us? Hmm. I think so. And then I pull out the photo of the sword and I hold up and I, I'm, I'm just like, I, um, I think we're both looking for this. Oh, the master will be pleased. Wait, what did you say? He says the master will be pleased. Oh, okay. Um, I'm like, uh, so do you know where we can find the sword? 
Or do you know how uh, we can make it? There's one last, uh, I made the straight away here, I guess you see, you did too. There's one last room I need to check, but I have this, I found this piece of metal in this room guarded by these spiders. They, they sunk their, their, I'm gonna, uh, to me. I'm gonna, um, like, here, let me hold on to the metal in case something else happens. He's gonna like a robot, like a robot. Sort of, he's like the uh, men in black guy. The uh, he's gonna walk over to you like, oh, oh okay, yeah. I'm gonna look deeper at him. You hold on to it for us. Oh. Um, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna say, what did the spiders do to you? It wasn't just spiders, my friend. This is the underdog. Oh. And just uh, when he makes that ex exchange, uh, give me a perception check. Nice turn. 12. You're going to hear some scurrying uh, coming from behind you, uh, where you came from. I'm going to grab him. And all right, so I have the medal. I put the medal in my pocket. I'm going to grab him and. Uh, give me one sec. Okay. Um, I'm gonna grab him. I'm gonna be like this. I'm gonna be like Shh, the spider's coming, and I'm gonna push. I'm gonna um move over. I'm gonna like pull him with me over to the entrance of where we are. Okay, that's where your turn will end. Perfect. Uh, Matt, let me say this now. Not even on the map. Matt, you have your own map. Oh yeah. Uh, called uh, Matt. That's cool, Matt. All right. If you remember, you came down here. You saw a character that was inside of a inside of mm -hmm. the blue, um, uh, inside of the blue crystal. Um, and that's where you were. All right. I think I tried to touch the blue crystal already and nothing yeah, happened, right? Nothing happened, no. All right. So I'm going to go exploring. I'm going to come back to this. So I'm going to venture to this room. As you get closer, um, oh, okay. as, you, as you get closer to this tea, you hear um, some noises and you can hear it sounds like it's definitely people um, in both coming from both sides of you. It's definitely a what? You can hear, you can hear, uh, it's definitely a humanoid, like from the way that okay. they're, they're walking. Um, you can hear clanking and clanking. Um, not sure, really, sure, 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 sure. You know, so which, it's, it's very dark in his rooms too, but which uh, way would you like to go? Uh, I'm gonna use darkness on myself. Okay. Using my drow magic. Um, so I'm just like in super stealth mode and I'm gonna go, I don't know how you're positioned, but it's north on my screen. Um, okay, as um, as you get closer, give me a perception check. Mm -hmm. 22. Um, you are able to determine that there are uh, four elf-like um, characters mm. uh, in these rooms, and they seem to have uh, they seem to have pickaxes on them, and they are uh, they are clanking away at. These crystals. Um, okay, am I? I'm hidden, right? Like you're, you're, like you're, I'm in a good hiding spot, or am I like? Yeah, they, have, they, have, they have not uh, seen you yet, but you are in darkness now. So I'm assuming that um, they can see the darkness, but they can't see into it. Uh, I guess that's true. Not yet, though. So. Um, as you get closer, um, you can hear them talking. They say, uh, 
quickly now. All right. The uh, one of them says, uh, "Quickly now, uh, hurry up! Not so loud. You don't want to. You want to get the beast angry. Uh, get the oh, get, get that asmonite. We need to get that asmonite. Okay. Uh, do I see any hiding spots? Like, is there anywhere that I could, considering I'm in darkness, like safely? Um, there, know, are kind of there, myself? there are there are shadows um, around each each of the walls. That you can sort of." Um, like in this <laughs> corner over here, right. could I like, could I just sort of like duck into the corner with my darkness? Yes, give me a, um, uh, let's say, stealth. yeah, give me a stealth. Uh, it's 25. Yeah, so you sneak um, very carefully and you are sort of hidden in the shadows of, at the wall. And you can see these guys are clanking and clanking away. The way that they're dressed, um, they almost look like, uh, like, you remember um, Zelda Ocarina Time, the purple uh, teacher? Do I remember uh, Zelda Ocarina oh, no, the Time, character. Spencer? What kind of insulting ass so question is that? You can know damn well I know. Zelda's, Zelda's teacher, the purple. Uh, okay, okay. Um, they're dressed so... Um, yeah, I see. So I heard them be scared. So from my darkness, I'm going to channel my inner Metal Gear Solid. And I... <laughs> no, I only have 19 Marlboros left. I don't know when I can find some more. Um, I... Sorry, I'm just looking through my inventory here for one second. All right. Are there any uh, rocks or anything around me? Um, there's a there's a pile of pink crystals in the middle That's of this. Okay, forget it. I'm going to use one of my grenades. And I'd like to do it. Like, I'm basically trying to, I want to draw this beast that they're worried about. So they want to be quiet. I want to from the cover of darkness roll a grenade and create some noise and see what happens wow okay from but i'm staying hidden i'm not emerging from my shadows all right grenades um i have two of them i'd like to use one okay so they uh Within a 20 foot, so there you can throw it in the middle of the room and hit both of them if you want. Um, you'll have uh, advantage on the throw because they have no idea you're there and you're in darkness. Um, mm -hmm. they, they are uh, drow, so they do have some abilities that may or may not come into play if they can see what happens. So where, where are you throwing it? I'm you know, throwing it. No, because I don't wanna I don't wanna fuck these actually maybe I do want to fuck these crystals up because they're mining them. Yeah, I'm gonna throw them in, in right at this pink crystal right here, kind of in the middle of them. Okay. So you throw a nice it. little bowling toss, like I'm you know, picking up the split. You throw it, they hear it, they're gonna re react. Um let's see if they get out of the way. So each character in a 20 foot uh it explodes, so they hear a clink, clink. They're just sitting there talking about how they need to get these uh, mine fragments, and uh, I was going to develop a story there, and Matt decided to kill them all. And they're going to do a dexterity saving throw of uh, plus two. So that guy fails, and the other guy also fails. Um, they take 5d6 piercing damage. Um, yeah. Roll your 5d6. Eighteen. Um, they're they're uh dead. They're both dead. Okay, I don't emerge from the shadows yet. I'm gonna um, wait and see what that happens. Noise, that noise has uh caused the others. You hear this? Hey, what's going on down there? Just like in um Metal Gear Solid, and mm -hmm. these guys snake. Are, use their speed to come over and you hear the other two 
um, drow coming your way. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna chill in the main heaven for now. All right, so that is your turn, and Jake, your let me save this one as Matt too. Jake, you're you're up now. Um, right. I think I say fuck that means you're uh yeah, naked gnome with you. Yeah, I've got that gnome. Um so you still have this um creature um known as a Neogi uh who is fucked up. You guys have been fucking him up. Um last time you crawled into this uh your your space um was covered in blood. You ran into a um, uh, a gnome who told you he was from Stristrad. Right. Right. And right. Um, you he's off he's also very very messed up um looking just like Aaron's and you're in the middle of a fight with this guy. And yeah. if you tell, let's see, do I have it written down who was first in that fight? I think it goes you, gnome, and then uh the genome guy. So you're up. Okay. Or Neogi, sorry, Neogi. Neogi's up. Yeah. So you're you go first on this one. That's the order of the initiative. Yeah. So this, this creature with a he looks like a he looks like a like a scorpion um with a weird head. Right here. Yeah. I'm in a. We're, we we have we already attacked him once, or we didn't. We just engaged him. You did attack attack him once, and right. also have him. Uh, he's he's not doing that well, but yeah. Um, I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna tentacle his ass. Let's see what whether that. Uh, no, I'm just gonna stay back here, and I'm gonna shoot a short bow. Over Yogi, see what happens. Okay. Oh, that was wrong. Sorry. Is a nine, a ten hit? Uh, no. Damn. Okay. Well, then I shoot and I miss. Um, the gnome is going to go, and the gnome is going to say, "Oh boy, we got to stick together now." Um, and he is going to um, swing and try to um, hit him. Now, this is a naked gnome, so he's just going to do his bare, bare fists. I guess he'll pick up a rock maybe and throw it. Um, and a 16, that's hilarious. 16 hits. Um, let's see. I'm just going to do a small, because it's just a rock. Um, two damage, it hits this uh, Nogi. All right, gnome, naked gnome. He says, come on now, we got to stick together. Defeat this beast and move on. There's a, there's a, there's a way upward from here. Um, and the Nogi is going to use his um, enslave. Uh, Nogi targets one creature it can see within 30 feet. The target must succeed a DC 14 wisdom saving throw or be charmed by the Niyogi for a day um, or until it, the Niyogi dies or it dies. And it must obey his commands. So he's going to try to get the gnome. Um, and it's a 14. Gnomes normally have advantage on those. No. Um, they normally have advantage to magic. All right, big roll, Jake. Big roll. Fourteen. Is that enough? Ooh, tie goes to the gnome, right? Yep. All right, the gnome just—you so see the gnome just sort of shake something off, um, and the yogi uh, missed with his with his action. Um, it's your turn. Okay. Oh, that, was a bonus, that was a bonus action. Uh, Neogi's going to go over. Hey, chef, no. Neogi's going to go over to um, the gnome and he's going to do his uh, bite attack. 
uh, which is an eight. So I don't think that hits the. No. Yeah, and then uh, it's your turn now. Okay. <clears throat> Going to hop in front of the Nogi here. And then I'm going to thunder wave. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Constitution saving throw for the guy. For uh, Naomi or whatever the hell's name is, Yogi. Well, uh, Yogi, my gnome guy, right? Oh, your gnome guy has to do a concentration. No, no, the bad guy. Oh, Niogi. Niogi. He's not a gnome. He's like a he's like a creature creature. Um, um, he failed that with an eight. Okay. Well, then he gets pushed back, and he also takes twelve thunder wave damage. He gets pushed back against the wall. Um, hits the wall. It's blasted. You see a couple of his um, uh, his couple of a couple of his feet are um, have broken off. He's still got four, six left. Um, not looking good. He how much did he take? Twelve. Ooh, yeah, he's not looking good. Um, the gnome says, "Yes, that's more like it." Um, and the gnome is going. He's going to say, "Do you have a weapon for me? I I, I could use one." Uh. Sure. Give him the wand. No. I'll give him this dagger. I have a dagger. He can take the dagger. Excellent. Yeah. The master will be pleased. And he sort of walks over like that alien from Men in Black um, and tries to stab this guy, um, this Neogi guy with it. Um, and he misses. Ah. Niogi is then going to uh, do his double attack and bite and claw. And that's a 20 natural. So no. That's a five plus a six. The gnome is, you see this gnome could say, give me your dagger. And he runs over and tries to stab it. Meanwhile, this Naomi uh, beast that you're trying to slay, it looks like a scorpion with a sort of dragon-like head. Um, he looks like a crab almost. Uh, bites this guy's head off. And his body's just sitting there, bleeding out. Um, as he bites his head off, your favorite type of creature jumps out. An intellect devourer. Um, and that's where we'll pause your turn. You see a brain shoot out of this guy's head. The gnome. Um, oh. Worlds are exploding. Didn't see that one coming, did you? Not really. I feel like that. I feel like you're going to die soon. Maybe. Um, Chris. Yep. It is your it is your turn. So I fly back into this room. I was like, oh shit, I've been here before. I'm going to go look at these eggs. What kind of eggs do these look like? Um, do you have any sort of... Uh, I guess you could give me a... Nature? Yeah, nature check, maybe? Did live with druids out in the wild. Fifteen. Um, you know it to be, you don't recognize it, but you know that you've never come across something like that. They are reptilian. Okay. Okay, yeah, he would leave them. And he would fly back up to that other room. Let me save this now. We're almost, we're almost uh, getting to it. 
Get out of here. All right, Let's save. Let's say this is Jake. All right, you're going back up to the upper? Yeah. I just uh, wasn't prepared to uh, go first right after that recap, so I needed a <laughs> minute to assess what was going on. Okay. Um, okay. Oops. So I got this magic field. Um, does it does it look like anything has changed? Nothing is last year. Your your uh, hairs on your um, arm when you went down the, the uh, static um, was mm -hmm. gone, but now it is back. Okay. Um, and as I approached towards the field, it gets stronger. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna stand back against the wall and pull out a javelin and throw a javelin at that statue. Okay. Um, give me a, it's not gonna do any damage, but give me no. a- um, it. Just throw my javelin? Yeah, acrobatics, I guess. Acrobatics? Yeah, to see if you hit it or maybe. Or my attack roll? Yeah, you can do your attack roll. It's fine. Yep. Uh, 13. Um, it clanks It clanks the uh, statue. Um, nothing. It makes like a... It, you could tell it's made out of crystal. Um, Statue's made out of crystal? Yeah. And as you... But it goes through the field? Yeah, it does. It goes through the field. Okay. No harm to the javelin. Okay. I'll come up to the field and put my hand through it. Um, it feels like you are even in more static. Um, okay, I'll, I'll walk right through it. And your ability to fly is gone. Um, okay. This is the anti-magic um, field. Okay. Anything on you... Um, or around magical has lost its magic um, okay. powers for uh, 14 hours. 14 hours, hold on. So the propeller on my hat stops spinning. <laughs> um, as you get closer, uh, give me perception. Okay. I'm just going to delete this. I deleted the field. I'll just draw it. Okay. That was a cool effect. Yeah. A 13. Um, you see that the statue has written on it the words uh, Morosis. Um, obviously, this is a statue of Morosis. Um, the character that you heard whisperings of um you see that this blue mind flare you would not have seen the blue mind flare but the like the blue mind flare but you see that it is a, a blue mind flare there's nothing that you would be able to determine whether or not this is the sage or not um his head has been cut open um and almost as if something has been taken from its its head um okay. the creature that was in there um, obviously did not want um, this creature alive um, and very malicious almost. And uh, there's a chest and it is locked. Okay. And, on, and on it, um, there's a code to decipher. Um, you have the number 98. Yes. And there's uh, some numbers on it. Um, there's a 66 on it. There's a 69 on it. There's a 95 um, that has been locked in place. That's the first number. There's been, there is a nine, there's a, so it's like a scroll, it's like a, a scroll to unlock it. So like wheels that rotate. And 95 is the very first number on it? Yeah, and that's locked as if uh, locked in place. Um, okay, and how many total? Um, five, there are five. Five total? Yeah. And There's if I 
spin them or is it just sequential yeah or yeah so it goes just okay um you see that there's a there's a 66 it looks like um and there's a 69 and the mm -hmm. um and there's a that's all you have there's just that's it the rest of them are just oh. random there's only one locked okay. in place one locked in place and two of the other four are yeah. 66 and 69 so you, have, so you have five numbers to try to open this right. um the right. first number is locked in place as a 95 right, right. okay all right, so I'll take that. It's a uh, that that's on top of the chest. Yeah. How big is the chest? Uh, it's like a normal, small, like a like, like a, a large, two foot by three foot chest. A uh, large carry on. Okay. Um, I'll go poke the mind player. Does it move? No, it is dead. Dead. Okay. I'll I'll rummage its body, see what it has on it. Give me a uh, investigation. Didn't see this one. All right, I got a three. You see, um, his cloak has a symbol on it, and it is a symbol of the. Um, Wait for it. Where are, are the notes? There's a symbol on it of a uh, circle behind a circle. Okay. Like a yeah, like that's almost. Okay. Um. Any other items or anything um, useful on them? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. It's, his body's been stripped by whoever did that. Are there any chunks of the statue loose? Um, no, but you can look look at when you look at the statue, you see that it's missing. Looks like it's missing um, a something for its hands. I got a hand held out. Um, its sheath doesn't have a sword in it. Um, okay. the, head, the head of this uh, character uh, looks like something's been taken off the, the, the head. Um, there is a, a gap in his uh, armor plate on his chest. Um, and that's, that's okay. what he's missing. Okay. Um, being a barbarian, he takes note of the, the armor and garb like that. Um, so I'll go and I'm going to try and pick up this chest and throw it over my shoulder. Okay. Um, and I'm going to... You can carry it fairly easily. All right. Perfect. So I'm going to come over and walk towards this green liquid. Okay. And that's where your turn went. Perfect. Um, all right, Aaron, we're almost there, guys. Don't worry. Um, Aaron, you're up. Okay, so, uh, yeah, okay, so you pull this guy towards you. You hear, uh, uh, you hear some spiders obviously coming. You're muted. Yeah, we're in the like off to the side of the entrance, and I'm holding him next to me. Yeah, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna whisper to him. I'm gonna be like, "Do you know how to make the sword?" All gnomes know how to make swords. Oh, oh, my head. Uh, okay. Um. All right. I'm gonna be like, "Okay, we're gonna get out of here." Um. So. I'm going to, uh, is there anything, uh, how can I tell how far away the spider is? It's still uh, coming towards us, right? All you hear hey. is scratching noises like of a spider coming. You can't see it. Okay. Um, I'm going to go, when it comes, we're going to kill it. 
and then we're going to run. Okay. We're going to run to get that other piece. I'm going to whisper, I'm like, where exactly is that third piece? I think it's in the other room. It's the only one I haven't found. Okay. All right, then. When that spider comes, we'll take it out and we'll go get that third piece. So you're running it, running down? No, we're um we're waiting. Waiting for the oh. spider. So you hear and it stops. It stops? You don't hear the sound anymore. Eerie quiet. I'm gonna look down at him. I'm gonna look up first. Anything on the ceiling? No. Give me perception. Uh, 18. You see the spider. Above us? It's right above you, upside down. Um, I'm going to grab the guy, throw him into the wall, mm -hmm. and then turn around the corner and sprint full on. Mm -hmm. uh, so. <laughs> you're trying to get the spider to eat the guy? Is that what you're Yeah, doing? Yeah, basically. Hey, um, no. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, I grab the guy, I throw him back deeper into the corner. I throw him like over here and then I sprint around this corner. Wow. Okay. Let's just see if he has any type of no to that. No, he does not. No reaction for him. Um, he's fucked up anyway. He goes into the corner. The spider drops down. Everyone roll initiative. Um, so I'll roll for this guy and just give his last one. Seven. Gnome is an eight. Uh, Aaron's a seven. And the spider is a 12. Spider is going to attack Gnome as, as requested. That's hilarious. I'll give you a coolness point for that. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so the spider is going to bite the um, is going to bite the swoop down and bite the um, the gnome. Try to at least, and that's an eighteen plus a twenty three definitely hits him. Almost dead gnome is going to take Kepler quiet. Um, two D eight. 2d8 damage. That's a three and a five damage. Um, I'm sorry, it's 1d8 plus three. Yeah, five damage, and he's got to do a constitution saving throw, which he succeeds and doesn't get poisoned. But does he, does he die then? He's dead. Um, the gnome is dead, and out pops your little friend um the intellect devourer who will who will share the uh um uh, initiative role um it's your turn where are you going um so i am going to uh hold on one sec Hold on a sec. Okay. <clears throat> so I turned down this thing. He I just uh I'm I'm I like watched him kill the gnome, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you see, just as you turn the corner, you see that the gnome's head explode and this brain with uh, feet that you recognize from the wall, the wall dungeon that you were at. Jump like out this, and head. I'm like, oh, these fucking things are everywhere. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm literally, I'm just gonna go. 
I'm out of here. <laughs> I dip through uh, these and then I make the right to, excuse me, into this, um, into this area. Um, when you get into this area, you see that there are, uh, just going to draw them, there are uh, three uh, dead, brain exploded, um, gnome bodies. Um, give me a perception check to see if you notice anything. Uh, 14. Uh, the gnome in the middle seems like he's carrying something. Um, his his arm is over his over his chest. Um, I'm gonna go over carefully watching my surroundings and the other gnome bodies and um see if I can um he's you said he's I see him holding it to his chest. Yeah, you see like he's he was like he's he's dead, but his body's kind of like holding on to his hand is holding on to something. In okay his, in his shirt. Um, I'm going to actually, I'm going to sneak around here and I'm going to stand uh, to the side and I'm going to keep an eye up and down the corridor and I'm going to send my mage hand to the body to retrieve what the gnome is holding. Um, it pulls back a cloth um, and a and a third shard. Third shard, three shards, baby. Yeah. All right. Um, and there's a note on the on the napkin um and it's has an it says um check the map to to find the way to it says map has the way to Moses Moses yeah Moses's statue Okay, I'm going to Moses. Um, maybe he'll split the red Marie. I don't know, whatever. Um, you hear okay. the you hear the churring. Um, we're still sort of in initiative. Um, there is a spider coming down the hallway behind. Hi. Okay. Um, I am going to. I'm going to try to do something cool. Um. <clears throat> I am going to pull out my uh, Vitrolic Sphere Spell Scroll. Um, I know Goblin, so uh, spell custom must cast spell by reading the words clearly in order without faltering twice. Cast a blah, blah, blah. It's going to see 10 wisdom check in Check and win the surroundings. Okay, which, is it which one it, is this one? Uh the Vitrolic um sphere spell scroll. Okay. Um, so it's calm surroundings, right? There's no wind. Nothing. All right. Um it has evocation with a range of 150 feet. Um, it has you throw a globule of emerald acid that explodes in a 20-foot area. Each creature inside must make a dexterity saving throw. On a failure, targets take 10d4 acid damage and another 5d4 acid damage at the end of their next turn. On a success, they take half the initial damage and none of the follow-up. So you see um, this, you see this spider, and uh, right behind it, this intellect devourer coming through that narrow passageway. You throw the I do, I cast the spell. His broken okay. heart was unfeeling, like shattered glass in an acid in an acid bath. Cleanse the filthiest. His broken heart was unfeeling, like shattered glass in an acid bath. Cleanse the filthiest. <laughs> Forgot when I gave that to you. That's perfect. Okay, so what happens now? The spider has to do a. So he has to make um, a dex saving throw. It doesn't say what the dex is though. Um. We'll just make it a hard one. Um, we'll make it 15. It's, uh, well, he fails that anyway. He got a seven. Nice. So he takes 10d4 acid damage. Uh, so here, I'll let me do 10. So 25 damage. 
And then at the end of his next turn, uh, give me one sec. Well, you can describe your kill, but what? But the intellect of hour also has to do that. Yeah. So everything within a twenty foot area, all enemies in a twenty foot. Well, everyone in a twenty foot area. Come on, intellect of hour. Fuck, you got an eight. Nice. Intellect of hour, same damage. He's dead. They're both dead. Describe your kill. Damn. Um, so I um, get this thing. I see these things crawling. Uh, I see this spider and this intellect devourer running at me. Also, the D&D movie gave me a whole different outlook on intellect devourers, and I, I honestly love it. Um, but uh, yeah, I see them coming. I pull out the vitrolic sphere. I um, say the uh, incantation twice perfectly. And um, yeah, this globule of acid shoots out of it and um, completely dissolves both of them. And the white mushroom. What mushroom? No, there was a mushroom in the way, but I would imagine it just Oh, up. the mushroom tree. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, uh, uh, everything within 20 feet. Yeah. Nice job. I'm uh, assuming I can't use the spell scroll again. No, that thing is done. Um, okay, that's your turn. Is I'll, I'll let you make your way, I assume, back over to yeah, the... Yeah, I'm going to go back to the forge. Very carefully. Yes. Um, okay. Careful not to step on any acid. Uh, let's say this one is forge. Okay. Um, now Matt. All right. Which I saved as Matt too, because you know. All right, Matt too. Right. You exploded these guys with your your grenade. Yes, but I'm hidden, and I was mostly just nervous about some giant beasts. So I, you said these guys were coming. So yeah, I'm just going to try and stay hidden and see what happens for now. I'm like okay. lurking in the shadows, and I have my bow drawn. If there's any sudden movements, I'm just going to let loose. The drow, um, the drow come into this room. They're going to do their own perception check. And they get a 14. Um, they look around the room. Uh, they say, geez, it's cold, awfully cold in here. Smokes everywhere. Um, they have disadvantage on that roll, so they're not going to be able to determine whether where you are because uh, the dust is still settling. So, Jesus Christ, what was that? We must be not by ourselves. Be cautious. They're going to start to patrol around the area, um, looking at the dead, the dead uh, drow that were there. Um, they said, "Ooh, they chiseled off some of this." Um, Amazonite, uh, and they're gonna they're gonna pocket some of it. Uh, quick, take it now. The uh, don't worry, there are more slaves like us. Uh, pocket the Azimite. Let's go back to work. Be careful, though. Okay, so I'm going to from the shadows, you know, Assassin's Creed style. I'm gonna let loose on both of them. Going for that, going for that headshot okay. uh, with my longbow. So first guy, guy on the left. I guess it's my left. That's a a thirteen and a twenty-one. I don't know. Would I have some advantage? Like I'm sneak attacking them. Uh, yeah, you can have advantage on the attack. All right. So it would be a 15 and a 21 on the guy on the left. Um, they both hit. Okay, and then let me just roll the other attack. The guy on the right. Okay, so that's a 23 and a 30. So yeah, I assume that's going to hit again. I'm going to do damage one. Damage two. So 16 on the guy on the left and 10 on the guy on the right. Um, the guy with the higher damage, uh, describe your kill. Oh, yeah. He doesn't even know what happened. I'm still in the shadows. He's, he just, his head just gets hit with an arrow. So uh, he just drops. Um, the drow has a... Um, 
He's going to cast. He doesn't see you because there's darkness, but he knows what darkness is. Um, mm -hmm. So he'll turn around. He's going to be able to make that out. He's going to shoot a hand crossbow at the area of darkness where it is most dark. Um, disadvantage. Um, and that's a 17 and a 9. So nothing, it does not hit you. He is going no. to uh, fairy fire in nice. your direction. Good move, Drow. Good move. Uh, which gives you an outline. Now, I don't know, uh, Chris, how would that work in darkness? It would be dark, but he would be his, his silhouette of light, right? Oh, he's also make a deck save. Oh, yeah. For the, oh, yeah, right. Fire, for, yeah, okay. Give me a deck save. Um, oh, 17. That's high enough, so nothing happened. I'm just chilling. Okay. Um, he's going to start to run back. Is it my turn again? He's going to run away, yeah. All right, well, I'm going gonna, gonna to move over here. I'm going to blast him okay. one more time. For good measure. Let's see. Let's see. A 12 and a 20. Uh, the 20 hits. Okay. Seven damage. Uh, he, you hit him, he falls down to the ground. He is dead. All right, great. Uh, I'm going to go collect whatever they were collecting, those little pink crystals they were excited about. I'm going to grab all those. Um, you grab pieces, you get three pieces of, um, Kepler, am Amazonite. Amazonite? Yeah. AMAs. This is Rena. Rena rolled low during death saves and didn't get healed by his group. Don't be a Rena. Roll high and subscribe. D-O-N-I-T-E. Okay. Um, All right. So I got that. From what you, there's no more initiative. Um, that's where you're at. There's All a. Right, gonna, is there, can I check out what else is going on in this room? Just dead bodies of Drow and uh, the crystals. All right. Well, I already got some crystals, so I'll go back the other way, I suppose. Give me a perception check. Oof, 11. There is a rope hanging down in the middle of the room. Um, oh, okay. And it is very long. It's got knots in it like it was meant to climb or, or lower. Okay. Um, I'll give it a nice yank. I assume there's, can I, is there anything else in this room? Do I notice anything else? Um, just those pink crystals, right? Yeah, no, you just, that's it, yeah. All right, so I'm just going to give the rope a yank just to make sure, you know, test its Chris, sturdiness. And Chris, if it feels good, I'm going to climb. Chris, it does feel good. Give me a perception check, Chris. Um, a 13. Um, at the corner of your eye, you see some dust flare up uh, out of the furthest, from the furthest uh, dark hole. Um, you see that there's a, a rope sort of pulls up out, out of the ground that's been tied to the uh, to the rock wall um, when he pulled back. Wouldn't necessarily... Gonna... He'll turn and yell, Ignis, is that you, my darling? Hey. Yeah, pull me up. Okay, I'm right, yes. right on my way. Is that you, my darling? <laughs> um, all right, so now it's uh, Jake's turn. <laughs> Old McDonald's yanking up my rope. Uh, let's go to Jake. Come on. Get out here. Jake, your boy exploded into an intellect devour. Yeah, I got that. So he's um, intellect devour is going to share the same. Uh, 
uh, initiative is actually you no know, hill world initiative, which is a six. Um, which is going to go last. You're up. It's your uh, gnome is dead. Talking to me? Yeah. No. Oh. To, to Jake. Yes. Oh. Sorry. Um, it's going to only do one damage. All right, I'm going to poison spray the uh, what's it called? Oh, the Niogi? Niogi, yeah. Constitution saving throw of 16. Three, natural one. Wow. Wow. So it really gets him. Yeah, it does. With uh, 13 uh, poison damage. Uh, Niogi's not looking good. Poison, uh, two more of its uh, uh, legs um, fall off. It's going to have uh, half its movement for the remainder of the time um, as the poison seems to uh, dissolve its, its uh, first two uh, legs. Um, Niogi is going to... Uh, attack the intellect devourer who is closest to him um, with a cannot do a fast so multi-attack it's a 16 for the bite and a 8 for the paw uh, the 16 hits and that's going to be uh, 1d6 plus 3, 9 damage, 9 piercing damage um, to the intellect of our plus poison. So the intellect of our is still my ally. Uh, we haven't determined that yet. Oh. Intellect Devourer has a, a piece of it chewed out. It does not look very good. Intellect Devourer, that is. Um, you do feel a certain pain in your head when that Intellect Devourer gets hit. Okay. Um, and you have a flash of the blue, of a blue uh, hive mind saying, ow, and it says, listen to me, bring me the pieces of Moses. Okay. Uh, it's your turn. Actually, the intellect devourer goes, yeah. chef, get out. Intellect devourer is going to multi-attack the Nyogi. Uh, for 10, that does not hit Yogi. Yogi's still alive. You're up. All right, I'll... Uh... Hmm. I'm just going to come up with a long sword. And, and I'm going to wait. Does the intellect of ours just a brain now? Yeah, it's a brain with, with the. So it dropped its, my dagger? Yeah, the dagger's still on the ground. Yeah, so the I'm going to pick up my dagger and I'm going to go after Neogi with the dagger. Okay. Does a. 24 hit. 
Nice. The Yogi? Uh, yes, that does, Pearson. Right. It's uh, four damage. Um, okay, it looks really fucked up. The Intellect Devourer is now going to use Intellect Devourer um, on the creature. Our intellect, I mean. Um, and the Neogi has to make a DC 12 check, intelligence, and it succeeds. Uh, it does not take any. Um, it does not take. Oh, it takes uh, psychic damage. The Neogi's death is down to one. Down to one. Uh, falls over. It is um, a failure. Yeah, it's dead. The intellect devourer turns towards you and walks over to you. Father? <laughs> so, can I make con like psychic contact with the intellect devourer? Yeah. Give me a perception check first. How about a 29? Um, the white mushrooms start to form around um, the dead corpse of the Neogi. Oh, shit. Hey, Intellect of Hour, do you know what these white mushrooms are? Um, psychically, as you can communicate without talking, you wouldn't be talking. You'd be using... Yeah, but I have to communicate with you so that I would know. Through the intellect of Mo's mind, the hive mind is going to um, tell, tell you and uh, to bring it the mushroom, the white mushroom. Which bring is called... Mushroom. Yeah. Are you about to do some drugs, Intellect Devourer? I don't know how I feel about this. Okay, I walk over, I pick a mushroom, I give it to the Intellect Devourer. Um, it is the uh, the renewal, the dream renewal mushroom of uh, the dream renewal uh, mushroom. Cool. Um, the intellect of hour is not, is going to see you as a, we, well, let's see. Ty goes to the intellect of hour. Um, he's going to be, the intellect of hour is going to stare at you for a second. Uh, and he's going to determine that you are not a friend. Um, because you have part drow, part druid in you. And he is going to attack you with a claw attack. Uh, and extract brain, extract brain, eat brain immediately. Yeah. <laughs> does an eighteen hit? Nice. You? And does an eighteen hit me? Yes, an eighteen hit me. Hits me. Okay. So he's going to uh, claw at you. And he's going to do one d four plus two damage. Um, that's five damage. Okay. Um, and he gets a multi attack. Um, and that does not hit. That's a two. Um, that's your intellect devour, not looking good either. I'm extracting Brian immediately. It's 18. Does that hit? Um, don't think he has a brain that he can. He, can... he is a brain. I don't know if you can extract the brain that's already. Go ahead. Well, he he's extracting it from the air. Melee weapon attack intelligence modification plus proficiency to hit reach five. He's just feet. he's just gonna eat the brain in front of him. Uh, you hit. 
Okay. 5d10 plus 3. Describe your kill because he's only got two left. Oh, well, you... that was 41. <laughs> um, is he dead? Though? Is he dead though? Yeah, he's, he's dead. He's, dead. he's getting eaten. Oh, right. yeah. I think it's pretty self explanatory. I dive in there and I'm feasting. I think, yeah, I'm feasting. As you eat this, um, you have flashes of the importance of the white uh, mushroom that you just picked up. Um, the white mushroom um, is important to the city of Trident. Uh, you see flashes of um, an uprising in the city. You see that the mushroom is a symbol for renewal and um, revitalization. You see that the statue was holding a mushroom, um, the, mush the statue of Moses. You see followers of Moses um, carrying uh, uh, these specific mushrooms. And you also understand that the mushrooms grow in the underdark uh, where people have just fallen. That's why they're important. <laughs> All right. Well, then I gather some mushrooms and put them in my inventory. And give me a perception check. Give you a fucking perception check. Seventy-four. Nineteen. <laughs> um, there is a. Uh, up ahead of you, there is a windy, windy cliff going all the way up. Very hard to hard to uh, maneuver up, but uh, it'll take you a little bit of time to get up. Um, and that's where we'll be for now. Okay. Um, Chris, you're up. Uh, before Ignis yelled up the uh, the hole, could I've done one thing. Yes. Could I have shook in that box on my shoulder? Yeah. I'm going to rattle. Does it sound like anything's in there? Uh, there's, it feels like there's one object and you hear clank, clink. Okay. So he's a barbarian, but his intelligence is still 11. So I'm going to look at this lock. And I'm going to be like, why not? He's going to put... 96, 97, 98, 99 after that 95. See what happens. Congratulations. Congratulations. Chris, I'm going to give you a coolness point. Um, the lock clicks and it opens. Um, inside of it is a, a crown. Uh, very similar to um, the crystal, uh, crystal crown. Um, very similar to that of Moses' statue. Anything else in the box? No, that's it. I'll take the crown out and I'll throw the box into that green liquid. Um, it sort of slides, it sinks, but it slides across the liquid, like the liquid's a little bit thicker than water, uh, like almost like jello y. Jello -y. Okay. And I'll say I'd be uh, climbing up the statue to put the crown on top of the statue's head when Ignis yelled up the hole. Um, the crown sits perfectly, and Ignis is there, or Ignis is on. Uh, I'm coming, I'm coming, Ignis. I'll start pulling pulling Ignis up. Yeah, uh, I'm having seconds. I might start climbing down. Like you like ropes? No, I was this guy pulling me up. Uh, that's a dirty twenty. Athletics you, check. You pull this thing up super fast, Ignis. Give me All a right. thanks, man. Uh, give me a uh, deck save. So fast, so so quick. Uh, oh wow, natural 20. 29. 
he pulls it so hard. Um, you fly up in the air right into his arm. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I shove him off me. Yeah, get off me. Thank you, though. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, I I found a statue, and a and a dead thing. Oh, I got some crystals. You need crystals. Good, good quality, quality stuff, crystals? man. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, there are a bunch of elves mining these crystals down there. Oh, I did find a crown that I put on its head. Nice. Looks better with the crown, right? Your statue sounds cool. Let's go check it out. You are admiring the crown. You hear a big gong. Boom. Um, Can we sense where it's from? Um, no, it's everywhere. Okay. And the uh, liquid starts to. You hear noise coming from the liquid area. And it is going to be Aaron's turn now. Woo. Where are you, Aaron? Uh, you're over here. Um, all right, so you're over here. The uh, let me see if I have the earlier one. Let me see. Forge. Okay, you just uh, melted the spider. Yeah. Um, and you're in the room with the uh, forge. Yeah, she's not over. She's not over right. There's a desk uh, with its stuff over here. Right. Um, on it, there is every tool that you need, um, except fire. But underneath, uh, you see this like you see a mold where you put a you put the uh, the pieces, and underneath that mold, there is. Uh, uh, Seems to be kindling of some kind. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my tinderbox um, and just like use a little bit more lantern oil. Spray that over the hay that's in the, it's in the bottom. Are there like, is there anything on the top or like inscribed on it that like explain how to use it? Um, yeah. It says put the uh, mold, the, the shards in, uh, like the tinder, um, and on the side of it says Moroses' uh, sword. All right, so I'm going to very carefully follow the instructions to make this sword. Um, I'm going to be meticulous. Give me... <laughs> Let's do, let's just do an straight up intelligence roll. Okay. Give me that in. 25. Um, so you put the pieces in, you light it. It seems to be that the, um, the shards are getting hot. Um, while doing so, you hear some voices as the, as each metal piece starts to adhere to the other pieces you're not you're not really sure how 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 quickly this this sword is put, being put together because from where you're from you know it takes a little bit of time but down here in the underdark uh things are not as they seem um and the sword sort of melds together in a quicker fashion than normal um mm -hmm. when it does um you hear the words uh courage um Bridge? Courage. 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 Like courage. You're courageous. Oh, courage. Oh, okay. yeah. gotcha. 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 Um, And it says, the courage of the heart is necessary for a knight. Tedious. The courage, courage of the heart is necessary for a knight. The courage tedious and unglamorous. Okay. All knights gracious gracious graciously accept the courage. Um and a sword is melded. 
Okay. I mean, I got most of that down. I didn't get all of it, but whatever. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, can you send me that? <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to write it down. Just send yeah, it to I'll, I'll send you the notes. It's fine. And like wrote, I'm writing down like every couple words. Like, oh my God, I have to remember this whole lot. You got it. You, you, you um, so yeah, I uh, take the, uh, merge the hilt, uh, like, you know, um, secure the hilt to the sword. Um, and uh, with this sword, I guess, I'm gonna put this in my pack. Um, and then I'm gonna go to this door and see if there's a way out. I mean, everything else seemed closed off. So is there anywhere that I can like use the sword to leave? Or is there um, um like your note that you picked up from the gnome said that the um the way to Mrozis was at the forge. So give me an, an investigation check. Twenty-six. Um you feel a draft coming from where the forge is now maybe they put the forge there because the draft helps the, the fire but there's something something blowing wind from behind the forge uh okay so put the sword away and then i'm gonna go like inspect the the seam to where like the forge lines up into the wall yeah just kind of like check around there um there's, an, there's a small little opening yeah. so i'm gonna try to like pull um give me your strength sixteen you move it out of the way just like you'd move a heavy uh dresser of some kind or a ah, desk. Motherfucker. um in this uh you see a tunnel it's it's like just enough for one person but there's a ladder go straight up. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm going up there. As you climb that ladder, um, you make your way about. You make your way to the top, and you hear some scurrying noises um, coming from your left. And give me a perception check. That's not good. Oh no, I rolled a natty one. You see this mind flare looking, disgusting, drow like, nasty, nasty person um, named Sprock. Um, but you, <laughs> but you, but you slipped. You got a natty one? Yeah. You slipped, and you're going to take some damage as you fall. Well, I slipped down the ladder. Mm -hmm. You're going to catch yourself. I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you a chance to catch yourself. Half D. Let me see. Hold on a second. If you fall all the way down, if you fall all the way it down. Couldn't be that you, ugly. You take nine bludgeoning damage if you fall all the way down. Give me a. Uh, oh my god. Give me a um, acrobatics check to see if you can. Uh, Oh, that's my jam. Oh, nat 20. <laughs> Come right. on. 33, you baby. Pause it. You take half damage. <laughs> that's um, hilarious. That's funny. Natty and the Natty. You said I take three then? Yeah. Oh, no. Um, Is it four? Four? Yeah. Gotcha. All right. And you see um, Sprock at the top making his way up this windy little path. All right. Um, I'm gonna like pile them and I'm gonna take a close look at him to make sure he's good. And be like, hey man, let's go, lead the way. Uh all right, where are you? Where are you, Sprock? Um all right, so you guys get to the top of your making your way up. Um out of this opening comes um a rather somewhat hurt looking uh where the fuck are you here Aranus pops up over here 
followed by a Sprock. Sprock, you could you could also be levitating too, but that's up to you. Um, Mind Flare Sprock, there he is. Now you guys are all in the same room, thank God. Mind Flares can levitate? Yeah. You have that ability. That's craziness. Um, and you all are at the top. And you see this statue, uh, Aaron, as you as you enter, you see uh, the statue. You see that there's a force field uh, around the statue. You see um, Ignis and uh, Wolfred, Wilbur, I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, and you also see that there's something coming out of this um, this green, or the the waves of the of the liquid are moving. Um, I gotta take a brief a brief pause and do a nighttime real quick. Okay. Um, you see a you see a crown on top of the statue's head, right? And the mind flayer's head was cracked open. And Wolper will be telling Ignis, "Oh yeah, that uh that magic stuff. It just made my little hat stop spinning. Hmm. Hat stop spinning. Yeah. Would you do the that? hat help? My hat normally like helps me float a little sometimes." But about now it's not spinning. It's not working. I don't know. Oh, did you? Um, I'm gonna. I guess so I'm gonna walk up. Can you guys? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, we're right next to each other. Well, I just wanted to make sure the force field wasn't like. No, it's. So did you walk? Through this? Is... Yeah, I, I went in there and I checked out the mind flare, and he. He didn't really have anything on him. I, um, I put the, uh, I found that crown. I put it on his head, on the statue's head, because it looked like it would fit there. I've been walking all through. It did, like, it didn't really do anything to me. So I don't know. I might do some weird stuff to, I'll look at Sprock to you, but I don't know. It's good for me. And I'll slowly stroll through and. Like pick up the mind flare, flare and show them to uh, everyone. Do any of you know this guy? Oh, those little buggers! Oh wait, you the the mind flare. Oh, is this character in the middle of the room? Not the. No, he's the dead the dead mind flare with his head crap cracked open. Yeah. No. Um. Looks like every other mind flare. Uh, Aaron, is, give me a perception check. Ooh. Okay. Just like every other mind flare, my ass. Well, maybe. 17. Um, this mind flare has specific uh, tattoos on it. You can make out and recognize it to be um, from the Shrezel uh, colony. Uh, you know that 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 they're blue, um, similar to the to the mind flare that has infected Sprock. Mm -hmm. uh, its head is bashed open. You do not know who did that to him. Um, if only there was someone who had an ability to see what happened in the room. Or, <laughs> uh, and um, you. You wouldn't. You wouldn't necessarily. You, you're fairly certain that this might be the blue sage. The blue sage. You can you can put things together. You think maybe someone someone might have gotten to the mind flare before you were able to cut its head off and take its skull. I swear it wasn't me. I found the guy like this when I got here. I got here just before you guys, or just before I saw you guys. Oh yeah, and I was flying for a bit. And then when I went in here, it stopped flying. Hmm. It wasn't fun anymore. If I flip that hole, I'll point down towards the hole. Yeah, there's some uh, uh, reptile eggs down there and another hole going even further down. So I don't know if you want to go check that out later. But the statue is cool. 
It's missing some pieces though. Missing some armor and the sword and his hands kind of broken up. Um Somebody Matt, took all this shit. Matt, you can see that the uh chink in the armor. Um give me a investigation. Oh, eight. You see that it's missing a it's the, the armor plate on its chest uh is made out of similar pink crystal like you took from what you took. Oh, okay. Interesting, interesting. Uh can I like replace it? Is that an option? Yeah. Try. I'd like to do that. Fate has it that the pieces you took fit it perfectly, Matt. Wow. Just as wow. I know. And the chest plate, um uh fits together perfectly, and you hear this uh these words uh when you do it. Um, actually, you all will hear it. It says, shining armor, and it says, hope. Hope is present okay. every day in a night's positive outlook and cheerful demeanor. All right. I relay this information to the team. <laughs> Guys, come check this out. Solving puzzles over here. Mm -hmm. yeah, what are you guys yeah. doing? Go over there. Uh, uh, but also, I want to see what's going on with this liquid that seems to maybe be filling the room. Well, what about that baby? Yeah, what about that baby? Um, I'm going liquid, to check out the liquid first. The liquid uh, begins to move a little bit more rapidly. Like, yeah, it's nothing. It's just some weird goo, and I'll throw a javelin at it. <laughs> Um, all right. You want me to roll that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay. Oh my god. That's it's a uh, that's a twenty-seven to hit. Um, it your javelin skids and then sinks. Or it's nine like piercing damage. Well, that's not fair. And so it's a sink. Okay. See, I told you it's nothing. You, did you did you notice that your spear, your javelin is sinking into the that's deeper than Yeah, it's liquid. A javelin sinks in liquids, typically, right? All right, let's just get out of here. <laughs> <Let's solve laughs> <this puzzle. laughs> Jake, did um, you get did you get the um I think you have an ability to like find out what happened there in the past? Yeah. What was that? It was a spell. Uh I think. Was, was it an item? Was it an item I gave you? You, med you meditate in a room for 10 minutes mm -hmm. and you're able to tell what happened there. Okay. Um, that was right, a, so, so I, meditate in this room for 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm meditating then. Um, for 10 minutes. Okay. So the statue still, still, so you got the asthma, you got the. So for the and, and during that 10 minutes, can I like look at the statue and like look at mm -hmm. look over this like mind flare and like just yeah more more noise is coming from the from the green liquid. Um but you can yeah do your investigation and your in your perception. Or you did your investigation with your with your nice roll, you'll notice that the um and you'll be able to put together that the gnomes were talking about uh Rose's holding a uh, holding a mushroom. Um, and there's a, there's a, he has an empty sheath on his back. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to gesture. I'm like, Hey, maybe we put all like, did you guys get a thing while you were coming here? I found the crown and put it on its head. 
And yeah. Ignis here, you saw Ignis just put these shards in the chest plate and it, it spoke. Yeah, I feel like I did my part. I'm going to put this. I'm doing my part. <laughs> I'll high five Ignis. Yeah, very Sergeant Jake, Trooper style. Jake, it was, an, it was an item. I'll find it for you. I just wrote it down somewhere. I'll, I'll figure out where that is. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'll put the sword in the sheath in the back. Um, you hear that similar gong sound, and the liquid starts to get more uh, volatile, more volatile. Um, and the statue is, holding, statue is holding one hand is like this, as if he's holding onto a flower of some kind. Um, well, did anyone get a flower? I'm mean, like, did anyone? And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. From <laughs> this map, the mushroom flower. Does anyone have the mushroom flower? I didn't get any mushrooms. Did you get any mushrooms? I have mushrooms. No. Well, well, the I'm the chef. You'd think I'd have some. Well, well you said you had mushrooms, Jake or yeah. Sprock. Well, let's try those. All right. Yeah. But I'm meditating, so. Oh, we'll wait till he finishes. Oh, yeah. Jake, your meditation for 10 minutes as everyone rests um, and tries to figure out the room. You see, all of a sudden, the room comes alive. And um, you see everything that... Uh, that has happened over the last um, over. You see a mind flare come in. You see that the mind flare is uh, has been sent there to uh, tarnish Moses's reputation. Um, you're not sure exactly how, um, but he was sent there to gather these items from. The statue and he started to then you see a familiar doom ham come in and surprise the mind flare you see doom hand um fight the mind flare you see doom hand die you see the mind flare um try to put his belongings back in his bag and carefully uh, leave and take everything from the, the statue and you see um you see doom hand cut the mind flayer's head open and take the blue skull um you see that was skeleton uh doom hand mind flare was unaware that uh doom hand has his resurrecting abilities still intact obviously and the skeleton uh, doom hand cuts the guy's head off and takes the um, the blue skull and he drops some some item um, in the water uh, as he leaves and he sort of uh, just walks slowly into the green uh, liquid as he leaves this area. Okay. Well, I clearly mentally relate that to the group. Not through your mind, not your mouth, because you have tentacles. That's right. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's something I in the screen. Goo. And then I give them the mushrooms. Uh, we'll, we'll go climb up and put them in. Um, okay, so, um, as you put the mushrooms in, you hear one last, uh, well, I guess it's the, the main chime, a big boom, and you hear, um, the great Moses, courage, <clears throat> cool, nobility with the crown, and hope, bringing those in the underdark the light from above. Yeah. 
Don't bring Moses down. All hail Moses. Moses. And just with that, the water starts to churn and churn and churn. And uh, roll initiative. Hell yeah. Let's do it. I think we scared of, I ain't scared of no slime. <laughs> uh, 22. Seven. Oh, wait. Third. No, yeah, seven. All right. Oh, thank God for advantage. All right, so what'd you guys get? Seven. Ignis got a 22. Uh, Wilbur got 21. Sorry, I meant something. Am I rolling? Initiative. Yeah. Eight. Um, out of this liquid comes a basilisk, a basilisk. Also, all of your magic items aren't working if you came inside that glowy sphere. Uh oh, that's not good. Let's see if they have one here. They don't. Just use the... I will use a dude. Make him a snake. No. Nope. Yeah, yeah, all these guys, no basilisk. That's, that's crazy. It's absolutely crazy, I say. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <clears throat> And on the basilisk's uh, back is a a drow. Um, he doesn't have wings, but he looks exactly like that without wings. Um, and the drow is going to go 17. The assassin drow. This guy might be the harder, the harder one to kill. But who knows? Who knows? Now, are you all familiar with what a basilisk is? No, right? Uh, according to Harry Potter. <laughs> Well, they do have. Oh. Um, sorry, I'm hitting the wrong buttons. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Flipping things around and stuff. All right. Oh, who's that person next to it? That is a uh, drow uh, that rode on the basilisk, and he's going to say, "All of you." Stop what you're doing. Easy now, Nessie. Uh, as the as the basilisk <clears throat> turns, turns uh, towards you like a rabid dog. Drop what you're doing here. Drop what you're doing here. And put yourself in knees. He throws down the shackles. You belong to the drow now. Uh, down off of the statue. I'm going to. Oh, wait. wait, wait. <laughs> We're looking for fighters. You'll be part of our war slaves. How far out did he throw these chains? About 10 feet. So I didn't do my motion movement on. I'm going to slowly creep around. So, an inch is five feet. Yeah. If I get like two inches away from him. 
I'll pick up these chains. Turn to the group. And yell, our Skull Force Ninja slaves. <laughs> I'm going to notch an arrow and shoot it at the drow. Yeah, I'm also firing. Let's start blasting. <laughs> I'll pull out my hammer. Or I'll throw these chains at the drow's face and I'll pull out my hammer. This is Valley. Valley sacrificed himself because he only rolled low. Don't be a Valley. Roll high and subscribe. Hammer and start going out. I'm after. obviously screaming. It's morphin time. And, and like for repeatedly. As, as <laughs> all of <this> is <laughs> um, okay. So, Ignis, what are you doing? I'm, I'm letting loose. Who are you hitting? I'm shooting right for the drow. Could me throwing the chains up at the drow give uh, Ignis yeah. advantage? Yeah. Good question. Good question. Ooh, nat 20. 20 no. No. Not for me. 16 and 26. All right, so what did you do? You shot at him? Yeah. Blasting him, yeah. Uh, what would you get? 16 and 26. Uh, 15. The 15 or 16? 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. They both hit. All right. We got 12. And chat, so 22 damage on him. And then I'm also going to attack boy right next to him. It's a 30. Ooh, and a natural one on the second one. So just a third. I assume a 30 hits, even though it's a scary monster. Um, yes. Okay. So that's 22 damage on the drow and 12 on... The basilisk. Okay. Um, and so yeah, I hit for 29. Um, I'm gonna do damage. Uh it's 15, and then um sneak attack 24, so 39. Oh, to, no. to the drow. Okay. Are oh, you gonna you're gonna run up to him? No, I shot him with an arrow. Okay. Uh, and what was the attack? Sorry. Uh, I rolled a nat 20. So oh, shit. Uh, that hits. And then, uh, <laughs> my, I did 15 damage, and then I did 24 sneak attack damage. Okay. Drow is not... Drow uh, spits up a little blood. He's like, oh, we got some fighters here. Unleash the fury, Messi. Wilbur. Um, wait, Aaron, she got seven, didn't you? Uh, for initiative? Your initiative? You got an eight, I think. So we'll take, you can keep your sneak attack. Um, I had an eight initiative. We'll leave, we'll leave, we'll leave that go. Aaron, you're, you're last, but Wilbur, it's your turn. So Wilbur, after he throws the chains, That's he's my going fault. to play it as it is. It's all good. He's going to pull out his uh, maul and uh, bonus action rage. Okay. You see his body turn from his from the neck down. The scales turn orange from green, and he's his tail is going to grow a little long and janky. <clears throat> and I'm going to run up to this. Uh, where is it? Where's my thing? I'm going to run up to. Uh, this drow, and I'm going to swing my maul at it recklessly for a what's that? So for a 22 to hit. Okay. I assume that hits for a plus two. Oh, is, oh, so 15 or is it plus three? I forgot my rage. Whatever. Uh, 15 um, bludgeoning damage. Thank you. To the basilisk? Sorry. No, to the drow. Didn't mean to scare. 
And then I'm going to... Okay. Is the basilisk within 10 feet of us? Uh, yes. Then I'm going to use my tail to swipe out the basilisk. Right before you do that, give me a... Uh, if a creature starts 30 feet within the basilisk um, and they see each other, which you do because you're targeting it, targeting it, you need to give me a DC 12 constitution saving throw. Okay. Let's see. L. Okay. Don't fail. Oh, no, I, sh I got a 14. Um, okay. okay. So, uh, on a fail, the creature magically begins to turn to stone and is restrained. Okay. Uh, well, I'm glad I succeeded. Okay. Um, um, so I'm going to do that a tail attack at it recklessly. Okay. Let's see what you're doing. Okay. That. Come on, dice. Okay, I'm got a natural 20 on the first roll. I'm going to take that. So that is a D8. Um, That's 17 plus two, 19 piercing damage on the basilisk. Okay. And he needs to make a, where is it? A, um, a wisdom saving throw. Con and efficiency. Of what? Uh, eight plus four is 12 plus efficiency bonus. He failed. Uh, where is it? Plus four. So it needs a DC 16. He failed. So he takes uh, 2d12 psychic damage. Okay. For, ooh, big rolls, 12 and 11. 23 nice. psychic damage. 20? Oh. 23 psychic damage. Wow. Uh, okay. Uh, the drow's turn. The Drow Assassin is going to let's see who hasn't taken their turn. Jake hasn't. Uh, Drow, Drow Assassin is going to cast uh, Fairy Fire on um will uh wilbur you need to make me a save okay it's a deck save and because it's an effect i can see i get advantage because barbarians are cool oh no uh that's an 11. So... i fail i assume yeah. So now, uh, any All attacks attack have advantage? They already did because I attacked recklessly. Um, and he's going to. Attack you with. It's. <laughs> assassinate during its first turn. No. Let's see, sneak attack. It's got a sneak attack. All right. So it's going to attack you with its uh, short sword. Okay. Uh, two attacks, and it'll do its uh, sneak attack as well. So okay. first attack is a 25. That will hit. Second attack is a, well, is a seven. A seven will miss. And uh okay so it's going to be you need to do a uh a constitution saving throw or take some poison damage 
depending on your a, a 13. Um, you miss. I mean, uh, you missed it. Okay. Uh, so you're going to take uh, 76. Well, wow. oh, Jesus. Three. That's two, a lot. Five. 10. Uh, 13. Uh, 19. And 20. A lot of ones there. You're lucky. Yeah, that's not bad. 20 um, piercing damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 20 sorry. piercing? 20, 20, sorry, 20 poison damage. Okay. Um, and you also get... All the piercing damage from that, three, too. Yeah, three piercing damage. Three? Yeah. Was that... Uh, okay, I'm raging, so it's half, so it's two. Yeah. And then um, it will do its sneak attack on you as well. Okay, that's piercing it's damage as well, so that's half... So that's how much? Uh, it says four D six. Yes. Eight. Wow. Twelve. And fifteen. So have fifteen. Eight. Okay. Don't fuck around with the a drow assassin. Uh, your okay. boy is going to go over and situate. Let's see how far. Let me just put the measurement on it. Measurement. He can move 30 feet. So, okay. so when he moves ten, more than 10 feet from me, I'm going to take an attack of opportunity with my tail. Uh, so what was this? It was 5, 10, 15. So he can move 6. Okay. Um, and does an 18 hit him? A uh, 18. It's a miss. Okay, so he's going to take um, eight points, uh, no, eight plus three, 11 points of piercing damage and okay. needs to make another wisdom saving throw, DC 16. He missed. Okay, so he takes an additional uh, 13 psychic damage. Okay. All right. Um, Baskus moves over here. Um, he's going to attack Aaron um, with a a bite because that's all he's got. Uh, ooh, does a twenty-two hit you? Yes, it does. Um, all right, you're going to take two d six plus three. Piercing damage plus 2d6 poison damage. Oh, so that's the six. Um, so that's 12. So you get you get 15 uh, piercing damage. I'm and... going to use my uncanny dodge to take half of that. Okay. And you're going to take um, six, uh, six poison damage. All right. So nine. And you and uh, oh wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake, uh, before on the start of your turn, which it's now, you have to give me a Constitution saving throw. Um, so when you're when you're looking at the monster, um, if you decide to look at it, um, you have to roll me the Constitution saving throw. Um, unless you're a certain feet away from it. Um, if you want to attack it and sort of, you know, you will have all these types of disadvantage and whatnot. Um, but you, right now, since you guys are looking at it, you have to give me a constitution saving throw. Six. Um, you are restrained. Your feet are thick, and they feel they feel like stone. Your legs are dead, like you stop circulation. Uh, Jake, what do you get? Hey, but I'm looking the other way. Um, not this turn. Oh, 
18. Um, he passed. You can do what you what you will now. I can do what I will. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to take out the wand. Yes. Oh, shit. Fuck yeah. I haven't taken out the wand in a while. Let's I roll. hope we get sent to a new plane of existence. 40. <laughs> what does a 48 do? Does it send you to Princess Peach's palace? <laughs> A cloud of so. 600 oversized butterflies fills a 30 radius <laughs> centered on the target. The area becomes heavily obscured. The butterflies remain for 10 minutes. That is amazing. <laughs> okay, so everyone's going to have disadvantage on, on all types of attacks. Wait, but you don't have to make that comp save because you're not looking at the basilisk. Yeah. Not, wait, I was targeting the guy, though. So yeah, I'm not in that area. Butterflies, butterflies shoot out all over it. Fill the area. Oh, so you just can't like see it. Well, you can see it, but it's it's heavily obscured. And how big was that range? It was uh, butterflies. At Thirty foot radius, so sixty foot diameter. About the size of that circle around this guy. It's centered on the target. That yeah. In fact, everyone in this circle here, let me put the, let me just try to say that this, this area here is filled with, with uh, butterflies. For the next 10 minutes. It probably minutes. makes it hard to make direct eye contact with the basilisk, right? Uh, one could make that argument. <laughs> but would one? Sounds um, like he's making that argument. Aaron, on your turn, uh, you can you have to do a, another save on a fail. Um, turn the stone. Yeah, baby. Oh man, that's so sad. Big roll, big roll. Oh, is it my turn right now? Indeed. And it's a con save. Uh, yeah. Now, if you are, um, yeah, it's a con save. Yeah. 15. Okay, so you pass and the, and the effect uh, wears off. Um, you, feel, you feel your feet uh, Damn, was a little lighter um, and you're back on your toes. So uh, I had it in me the whole time. Um, am I currently... If you, have, if you have a way of, of fighting him without looking at him, you can... I don't know... Yeah, I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put hammer time in my mage hand's hand. So hammer time weighs two pounds, and my mage hand can hold up to ten pounds. Um, I'm gonna use hammer time. I'm gonna twist the handle um, to give it a charge, and I'm gonna use my mage hand to swing the hammer into the basilisk. Okay. Um, oh my god, three. All right, hold on a second. I'm going to use my luck. Where's my luck? Oh man, it's my last luck. All right, let's do it. 16. 16 hits him. Nice. Fuck yeah. Oh, you about to see Hammer Time work, baby. Um, so he takes three damage. Um and uh okay, so uh I twisted the handle, expending one charge. Um, so make a DC 16 charisma saving throw. And on a failed throw. The target disappears um, and uh, gets shunted forward in time. Okay. Um, so one charge is 1d4. 16, I have to beat. 
two. Yeah. Man, he's got a negative two. All right, here we go. Oh, I got a, I got a six. Uh, you failed. So yeah. you disappear for two turns. Okay. Huh. Um. Yeah. Pop my mage hand back to me. Tuck my hammer away. Um, and I'm like, focus the drow. <laughs> Quickly. Uh, <laughs> we don't have much time. Uh, Ignis, you're up. Um, I can't really. No. All right, I'm gonna circle this way. Okay. We're staying kind of like behind the statue, you know, a little bit cover, and I can like get to sleep. And I'm gonna try and hit the draft. Okay. Because I'm pretty sure I heard my friend yell, "Hit the draft." Okay. You have disadvantage because there's flower, there's butterflies everywhere. And see, okay, so yeah, be one natural one. And, and I assume one, that one hits me. <laughs> and one twenty five. Yeah. Um, so pretty pretty big range on the attacks. A twenty five. One twenty five and one natural one. Uh, how much piercing do I take? Well, you're gonna you're gonna get a uh, you can dot you can try to dodge this. I use okay. a or you want to take you want to use a reaction. Yeah. No, I already used my reaction on this turn to hit the basilisk. Then no, okay. So no. who's um, all right? So yeah. Chris takes twelve, have to six, raging, and your boy the drought takes eleven. All right. Um, Drow is looking a little weathered. Um, Wilbur, it's your turn. Or Matt, are you done? Do you have any other? Um, hold on. Give me one second. I just want to. Okay, no. Go, go ahead. I'll, I'll wait. I'm good for my turn. I'm going to duck behind the statue. There we go. So for Wilbur, on his bonus action, he's going to scream. You hear a little, little uh, kobold scree scream, and everyone is going to have advantage against the drow for this round until, uh, until the start of my next turn. So I'm going to take my maul and swing it at this drow. For a, ooh, I assume a 12 will not hit. Uh, no. And then I'm going to swing my tail around and swipe out this drow. Okay. I assume that's regular with advantage because in the butterfly, so I can't see anything. So 21 to hit. So that hits it? Yeah. So that is um, that much piercing uh, plus two, uh, 13 piercing damage. And it needs to make me a DC 16 wisdom saving throw. Twelve. Twelve, it will fail and take 20 psychic damage. Wow, You're not looking good at all. And that's my turn. Um, okay, who hasn't gone yet? So, okay, so he's going to attack you then. Um, yep. And you're lucky. You're really lucky. Or unlucky, depending on what happens here. Okay, he's going to attack you with his short sword. Okay. Uh, Multi-attack, but I guess he's going to have disadvantage because there's butterflies everywhere. So... 
first attack is a with a 24 and ooh, another 25. Oh, so hit. The first attack hits you. The second mm -hmm. attack is gonna be a 21 and a nine. So that will miss. The first attack hits you. Yep. So you're gonna take that one. Is that con save for the poison? Yeah, you but you're gonna take the you take piercing damage, which is a, a yep. one, which is six piercing damage. Half to three. And then the constitution saving throw of a fifteen. Oh, oh that was almost a natural one and but it was a twenty one. Shit. Um okay, so nothing happens there. He's going to um let's see. He'll cast darkness on And cast darkness on just an object. Well, he, he is in heavy obscurement, so he can he has a hard time seeing people far away too. Yeah, he has a, a for for natural light. Um he doesn't do well with He's natural special. Um he'll cast darkness on himself. Okay. Actually, you know what? He's gonna cast darkness on the statue. Let's see what that does. So there is a 15-foot uh, radius, about the same size as the circle um, of darkness around the um, statue. So Aaron, you're in it. Sprock, you just missed it. This big wall of darkness uh, blows up in front of your face. That's not good. Um, I'm not sure what the strategy is behind that, but that's that's his turn. Oh, Spencer, actually, uh, I because I was swinging recklessly. Oh no, I didn't reckless this last turn. Never mind. Ignore me. Sorry. All right, uh, Jake, your turn. Um. Okay. We're still in the ten minutes of butterflies, right? Yep. Yeah. We're about six seconds into the 10 minutes of butterflies. That's what I was going to say. All attacks against the dude in there have advantage, but also disadvantage. So even. Is he, doesn't he disappear though? Oh, he's in, no, darkness is on the statue. Yeah, but the guy had disappeared for two turns, right? Because Aaron... The Basilisk did. Yeah, the Basilisk not, did. Not, not the Drow. Oh, yeah. All right. I'll attack the Drow. Uh, I'm going to use... Wait, I had something I was going to do. I'm going to have Poison Spray him. Constitution save, 16. Go, Spencer. Um, do I have to make that too since I'm right next to him? What is the what does the poison spray say? It says you extend your hand toward a creature you can see within range. What's the range? Uh, ten feet. Uh, you're. Can I move? Yeah, you can move closer to him if you want. He's, yeah. he, he's this way. He would be this way. The other way. This guy's this guy's the dead dead guy. He's over here. He's over there. All right. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, Constitution saving throw. Yeah, sixteen. Uh, so how would I do this with the butterflies? Uh, do I give myself advantage on this? You can if you want. <clears throat> I think I do. Saying the butterflies take some of it. Yeah. Because you're spraying through them yeah. flying. Yeah, all right. Six and a 16. There you go. There it is. All right. Then you're Motherfucker. fine. Motherfucker. Um, but now you're in, in the zone. Aaron, one turn is passed. One turn is passed. 
Um, you are currently in darkness. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, so I'm like, fuck, am I blind? And then I'm gonna kind of wander off in the direction that I remember I was facing, which was like towards this person. And I'm just gonna keep going out until I breach the darkness. Yeah. I don't know how far I have to go to do that. 15, uh, 15 foot radius. Well, I'm like, I'm like up on them right now. So I don't know. Are they also in darkness or was that just by? No, we're out of it. We're but we're in butterflies. Right, right, right. right. I was in the butterflies. So we're dude. we're in butterflies, and by the statue of darkness. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like I, I walked out. Oh shit! I don't know how I grabbed that. Um, I walked out in the direction of the drow because like I didn't change my orientation or anything. So I just start walking forward. Um, when the darkness comes, and you know, I'm just walking forward until I break out of it. You see, you, as you come out of this darkness, you're just blasted in the face with butterflies. Right. I'm just like, uh, these fucking things are still here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to um, pinpoint where the drow is, and then I'm going to swoop around in this, like, using the butterfly, believe, trusting in the butterflies, and <laughs> my trusty invisible ring that has slipped on my finger. And I'm gonna come up behind her. Um but yeah, and I'm gonna attack. I'm gonna attack her. Go ahead. Short sword. Okay. Uh yeah. Uh 13. Oh uh that does not yeah, no advantage, right? No advantage. Um nope. so I yeah, thrust forward and miss. <laughs> I step back into the butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> Wilbur. No, Ignis, you're up. Mm -hmm. All right, so like we're e we're still even on the drought, right? Yes. Yeah. We're attacking. Yeah. All right, yeah, so I'm out of the darkness and I'm out of the drow. So I'm going to pop back to the left. Little sneaky, sneaky elf that I am. And I'll just try and blast them since we're even. Uh, do I just want to blast them? No. I don't just want to blast them. I want to super blast cast some hail of thorns. Oh, shit. The last spell slot. So I got left. Um, so the next time I hit someone with a ranged attack, well, we'll see what happens if I actually hit them. So that's that. So that's one twenty and one fourteen. The fourteen misses. What did you? Okay. Was that was that with advantage or disadvantage? Or is that just you get two? No, attacks? that's normal. That's my just my so regular two attacks. Roll, roll um, both of because you have disadvantage because of the. Well, I he has we a advantage no advantage because of no. my scream. Until the yeah. start of my turn. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. So, so, you, you, yeah. so I just rolled yeah. a normal. Um, so it's got to make a dex saving throw. Um, he has evasion. So if I'm subject to a dex saving throw, um, he'll take, well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it'll What's take it? no damage if you fail. Yeah. What's the saving throw? 15. My baby. Oh, natural 20. That's fucking right. Oh, boom, boom. Uh, um, so he doesn't even take the half damage? Doesn't take any damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a bummer. Well, either way, I'm still going to roll my regular attack damage. Seven. That sick. It was the first time a natural... Yeah, it's fucking right. <laughs> uh, damn, I love it when... I... Yeah, I haven't had a roll go my way since... The wall, the wall dungeon. Go ahead. What's your, what's your thing? Seven. Seven? Seven damage. Oh, so for what? I hit him once. Oh, okay. Fine. The other thing's a bonus action. It's only if I hit. I still get the regular. He is not looking good at all. All right, I, I ducked behind now this dark cloud of darkness and statue, so... Just completely hidden, chilling. 
that's my turn. Okay. Um, Wilbur, the hero. Wilbur will scream once more, come to daddy. And uh, that's my okay. bonus action. We have okay. everyone has advantage again for this round. Wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Do the butterflies count as creatures? Yes. All right, so they might, can we make like a collective saving throw against my, against my thorns? I messed up. I should clarify before we go any further. Everyone it's, around the drow has to make a deck saving throw, not just that. The butterflies made a dexterity saving throw of an 18. Okay, yeah, they're fine. But if there's any humans, it's FYI. Yeah. Wilbur's rolling. Wilbur got a 21. <laughs> Okay. And you guys are good. Everyone's good. That? It's uh, like half, half right? so it's only uh, it's five. Five half is three. Aaron got some damage there too. Aaron, Aaron also three. got five. Yeah, you get five. Oh, I take five. Damn. Yeah. Oh, you did. I don't have help to lose. Sorry, I didn't. What? You know, play it right. Play it right. That's all. What's your health at? Like two? Four. Nice. No one's morphing yet. True. Okay. So uh are uh did the butterfly succeed? Yeah, the butterfly succeeded actually. <laughs> so but they still took some damage. So yeah, they all take five damage. Or I feel like uh, I just massacred at all the butterflies. Is uh, it like a little column around us? That is like lesser for butterflies for a round. No, there's so many that it's it's still disadvantage. It, it just fills right in. Okay. Yeah, but it's every so, uh, creature. It's all of them. None of them are missed. We rolled the collective eighteen. Yeah, but well, they they, they, they all get wiped out, but they get it gets swarmed again by all the others. Oh my god! Right there's so many butterflies. Yeah, so I'm going to roll my wonder wall. We need to get rid of this wonder wand. It keeps saying, you know. Okay. It is the wand of wonder. Don't question it. <laughs> That's true. All right, so I swing my maul, and the maul misses, and then I swing my tail around, and the 23 will hit. Yes. For uh, 12 piercing damage. And I have one last charge of this. Make me another wisdom saving throw. Let's see. Eleven. DC of sixteen. It fails. It takes another two D. Describe your kill. Another eight psychic damage. So, Wilbur swings his hammer, smacks the ground. His tail comes overhead. Pierces it right in its forehead, and then you see the the creatures, the drow's head slowly get bigger, 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 and poof, pop out, <laughs> like pop open. Hilarious. <laughs> and that's my turn. Yeah, I was dead. Uh, Basilisk comes back at Aaron's turn. Jake, it's your turn. I start eating brains. You would you like to eat the drow's brain? Oh, yes, I would. Um, okay. So you go over to the drow and you begin to take a bite out of its brain. That's right. Um, you get a flash. Um, you're actually, why don't you roll me for these flashes? Roll me um, a... Sorry. Just roll me a straight up intelligence uh, roll. Just a d20. Roll for brain. Actually, roll me a history. Roll me a history. Or insight. Okay. Roll me a, uh, a history. Recall lore. I like that. Ah, I got a four. Um, you see him taking a shit earlier today. <laughs> I'm gonna take a great insight. <laughs> to the inside and take another bite uh roll me a uh a lore. 
yeah. history. Nineteen. Um, as he got out of the bathroom, um, you saw that he uh, cleaned himself off with a piece of parchment that said "Down with Moses." Um, he was in the uh, a shack uh, not too far off uh, from where you are now. Um, in that shack is a drow camp. Um, and there's a lot of pamphlets stacked up high that say down with Moses um, on them. Okay. So, uh, Aaron, it's your turn. And I think at the beginning of your turn, at the end of your turn, he just comes back. Um, it's two full turns. So okay. it'll probably be at the end of the turn, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to rifle some pockets. I'm like, guys, we got to get out of here. Uh, does, does the drow have anything on them? Yeah, the darkness know. would be gone, right? Yeah, darkness is gone. Um, give me a uh, investigation. Seventeen. Uh, he is a drow assassin. Um, he is uh, has been sent. He works uh, obviously as a slaver. What you can tell is that he's a an assassin that works with the posse at the camp nearby. Um, well, you know, nearby in quotations. Um, and you just see some uh, shackles, and that's about it. All right. Sprock, he's got, hurry up, he's got, got a short sword. And put them, huh? He's got a short sword and a light crossbow. Oh, I'll take those. Oh, I'll take one of them. And does anybody want any of these things? Is it better than my crossbow? He, he has a light crossbow? A light crossbow, which is just a lighter version of a... No, I'll just use my short bow. I'm, I'm good over here. Um, Sprock. Yeah. Go put the flower in the statue. It's already in. Oh, I thought he hadn't done that yet. I thought that got oh. interrupted by them coming. Wilbur went and put it up there, and that's after he put it in, that's when it banged again. And this guy came out. Um, all right, well, fuck, where, I mean, I thought this there is getting these items. I don't know. Where do you guys want to go? There is a, a, a way down from the hole that I came up. There's a way down? Yeah, I went, I came in this hole. And down below this, there's a little like area with some uh, some creatures' eggs, and then the, there's another hole that keeps going down. I didn't check that out yet. Yeah, but by the time we get there, the basilisk is going to be back. Well, yeah, you just wait until the basilisk. Basilisk has returned. End of your end of <laughs> basilisk returns. Um, you see, as you look, you see, you you feel a big poof. And the, and the butterflies, uh, some of them uh, kind of scurry away from the basilisk. Uh, some of them start dropping like stones. Um, half of them fail their um, I would their say, con save. Yeah, I would say that. And the, so now half of the whole field of the butterflies are gone. Yeah, I would say that the the uh, negative effect of the butterflies is gone now. There's still a couple. Um, flying around. One of them is going to be parched on top of the statue. Um, and I guess it's the it's not the basilisk's turn. It's Ignis's turn. All right. Well, Ignis, I'm going to start blasting. Let's see how on a three and a twenty-six. Those both hit. Uh, 23 and 26? Yeah. Yeah. 24 damage. Damn. All right. Basilisk is Good. looking. 
like he's bleeding. He's got open. I'm just sniping him. I'm still way over here. Oh, as far away as I can. Oh, no. No, no no advantage, right? No, no. no, That was on the drown. Um, Ignis, uh, that's your turn? Uh, Yeah, I just duck behind the statue again and I chill and just keep popping out. Wilbur, give me a constitution saving throw. Wilbur is going to remember from his training what his teachers taught him and start looking at the ground. Okay. Um, okay. Do I still have to make that comm save? Um, you can avert your eyes to avoid the saving throw. You can't see the bascals. Until a I start advantage on attack rolls. No, it says you can't you can't see the basilisk until the start of the next turn when you yeah. kind of avert, your, avert its gaze again. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking down at the ground. Yeah. I'm going to bonus action scream again. So everyone gets advantage. Nice. And then I'm going to swing recklessly. Uh with while looking at the ground so it evens out um with my maul twice okay first was a 13 to hit i assume misses no yeah it misses and the second is a 27 to hit that hits oh, yeah for 18 points of bludgeoning damage wow okay Oh crap, I forgot I had that. Um and that's my turn. Yeah, it's my turn to me. Okay, yeah, that's my turn. The basilisk is going to bite you. Mm -hmm. He has a he has a advantage. Yeah. So that's a 18 or a 13. Uh, that hits. Um, so you're going to take 1d6 piercing damage and then 2d6 poison damage. Okay. 2d6, that's a 4 and a 6. So you take 9 piercing damage. 9 halves the 5. And then you take nine. 2 plus, you take, wow, 8, eight uh, poison damage. Okay. Still good. Um, it is Jake's turn. Give me a constitution saving throw. Uh, five. You are restrained and your feet start to turn to stone. So restrained, um, your speed becomes zero. Um, you have, there's advantage on all attacks against you. You have disadvantage on all attack rolls and dexterity saving throws. Okay. Jake, how did you get a five on your wisdom saving throw when you have a plus eight as your modifier? On the wisdom, no, it's saving a throw. You said constitution. Constitu saving. Oh, sorry, sorry, never mind. Which I have a <laughs> plus one. That's how. That's, a, that's, a, that's how. He's a mind player. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to see if there's something. I, no, my answer. I think. It'll be okay. All right. Well, that's my turn, right? I mean, you can try to attack him in a way if you can, but I don't know what you have. Aaronis? Yeah. Hello. Uh, give me a constitution saving throw. 
unless you have something you can look what down or yeah to... what if i was looking i knew he was coming back so i'm like staring down at the ground um does the mirror trick work i feel like it certainly does um so i i kind of know the general the general space that he's in hold on let me see if i can like... if you look into your mirror uh that would possibly negate your d disadvantage on the attack um but you'd have to roll for um a dexterity or the if you're going to attack with the mirror like perseus for the vert yeah um I am going to <laughs> oh, oh I wonder if I can make that you know what yeah baby do it it might be morphin time <laughs> um it's morphin time. Like I've got four health. Like you, I, haven't, I can't, you like, haven't you haven't rested since the morphin time. What's the oh, oh yeah. so I can't use it again, right? Fuck. Um, uh, do you still yell that out? Yeah, I still yell out his morphin time. <laughs> Wilbur <laughs> just instinctively like, oh. yells out, "It's morphin time," and he hasn't morphed yet. The so Wilbur is going to take his free action to morph. Nice. You, have to morph. you have to morph in order for that to happen. So Wilbur. Oh, can I can't. It. Yeah, Wilbur yeah. can do it. Wilbur can do it, but but Aaron can't because he doesn't. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. I'm going to be like, fuck. What all this does. Um, I'm going to pull out this pink potion that I have. Okay. And I'm gonna drink it. This pink oh. potion was gathered. Is they fuck it and drink it? <laughs> Where'd you get this pink potion? Um, I think this is the one that we got in the labyrinth when we were. Um, it was in that. Uh, there were there was that was the one where there was like the black potion, the pink potion, and the green potion. I think. Okay. And there were like two rooms that we went into, and each one had, I think it was Bag of the Minotaurs. Okay. Yeah, because I also have a green. Oh, you mean the wall one where you had pink, green, and black? Yeah. Okay. That's exactly that. Yeah, because I have the blue, the pink. I also have a blue potion. I don't know. I forget. Oh, right. The blue potion we got at that other room. That was more. That was more recent. Oh, yeah, I have it here. Pink. Um, the pink potion is a random potion. Give me a one one d hundred. I have a list of random potions here. One D one hundred. Let's do it. Thirty-eight. 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 Your skin turns to metal for one D four hours. You can roll that. One D four hours? Like yeah. am I like metal Mario metal? You're like Colossus and you have resistance to all material attacks. So bludgeoning and piercing. That's amazing. Uh, two. I rolled a two. So two hours. Um, so I, oh, is I'm my metal reflective? Huh? Is the metal that's coating me reflective? Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not that colossal. Like. Um. All right. So I'm gonna. You know what? I know the general direction. I'm not gonna look up. I'm gonna run with my head down and my metal skin. <laughs> Uh, but I guess drinking the potion probably was my turn, right? So I'm gonna um I'm gonna just move forward. Take a look at that mirror. Um okay. And it is now uh Ignis's turn. Uh 
I'm going to blast them. Are we about to see the end of Sprock? Because if he fails this next Constitution saving throw, he's going to be petrified until he's freed in the Green Restoration spell. And he's the only person who knows the Green Restoration spell. True. Um, but I don't know if he has it prepared. Ignis, Sprock needs you. My, I missed like 15 seconds. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm just going to, I don't have any cool shit to do, so I'm just going to keep going. Sounds good to me. You, As you look over, you see a bunch of stone butterflies. Uh, you see that Sprock is slowly transforming into stone. Um, everyone's uh, looking downward. Yeah, that's all right. I'm just chilling way over here, far away as I can be in the room. Um, and I hit him with a 24 and a 28. They both hit. Well, if the butterflies are gone, then that would be a bit advantage. Regular advantage? Well, if you're looking at the ground, then it's regular. Yeah. Never mind. I'm not looking at the ground. I don't need to. Yeah, then it doesn't it's matter. A, then, I didn't get any it... natural 20s, so. Okay. Let's, let's see. 12, 12, and 9. So 21 damage to the basilisk. Okay, I think he's getting worn down here. 29? No, uh, 21. Yeah, he's getting, he's fucking, fuck. he's got wounds bleeding everywhere. All right, I just keep helping this guy with arrows. Doing everything I can. Ignis. And then I hide again. Ignis, you're up. That's me. I don't know, I'm sorry. Wil uh, Wilbur. Wilbur. So Wilbur Skull Force ninja up and his maul crinkles over in green. Do you have my uh, Wilbur I ninja? Do. If I'm going to get it, I'm going to fucking use him. I'm excited. So you see Wilbur suit up. What does he say? His maul. It's morphin' time, bitches. <laughs> I don't know what he says. Um, he's gonna say, "Let's let's save Sprock. He's not looking well." I'm going to uh, still keep looking at the ground and uh, swing out this basilisk. Okay. Oh, shoot. Um, with my skull force weapon. Is so it's regular. Come on, it's a twenty-two to hit. That hits. Or roll. For um, twelve bludgeoning plus a D eight of poison plus well, five poison damage. So total, how much damage? Uh, so that's thirteen or twelve plus five. That's uh, seventeen total. Describe your kill. So you see Wilbur morph into this thing, y'all. It's morphing time because he's so excited. He's just gonna swing his maul up underneath the chin of this basilisk and hits it up in the ground, up in the air. He's gonna use a second attack just to smash it down on the ground. Hmm. Nice. Gonna roll it anyway. I feel like it. Yeah. For a 21 to hit. So he just smashes it down. And that's it. Nice. Did you um say anything? And then he breaks. What are you gonna say, Spencer? Did you say anything to Ignis while you did it? Well, then I then afterwards he's going to start break dancing right next to the body of this thing, doing like the spin on his back, and then pause and do the finger point wink to Ignis. How about now, baby girl? No, I'm so far away, I can't even, I can't even see what's happening. <laughs> and, and Wilbur is a tiny creature. Yeah, a small I'm creature. Um, okay. So that was the water subsides. Um, it becomes almost like eerily still. 
Um, there are two ways. Uh, well, you have you have your ways that you found before. Um, I don't know, don't recommend, but it's up to you. Um, you do know that Doomhand went into the water. Um, I don't know if that's the way you, you want to go, but that's entirely up to you. Um, if you want to make your way back down and go where that nest of creatures were and try to go out that way, um, you have multiple exits. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I did get a natural 20 minus one for a 19 performance check with my break dancing. Um, and I'll uh, say, suggest, well, if Doomhand went down that way, we should go there. You want to go into the water? Well, the water cleared up, right? Uh, well, the first, water, I think. The water is nearly still. So first, I think we should try and see if we can catch a rest here. Um, it's pretty fucked up. And we can keep watch and try and sort this out. But then afterwards, yeah, let's go in the water. So yeah. we need to uh, watch as the others um, rest. Well, I can do four hours. Yeah, so can I. So we can split yeah, the watch. So. Exactly. All right. So who's doing the first watch? I'll do it. I'm I'm nice and healthy, Aaron. Oh, Just that's true. I, I have no I have no help. <laughs> I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm looking at Aaron. I'm like, you you take a little rest first. It's all right, man. All right. I roll. Over, we'll, we'll, yeah. What'd you roll? Over. We'll, we'll do the first two hours with uh, Ignis. No. I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, all right. We'll, we'll we'll do the first two hours then. That's hilarious. Um, nothing happens in either one of the, either one. So you guys can take your. Uh, how long were you trying to rest? Eight a hours. long rest, right? Yeah. All right, you guys can take your long rest. Nothing happens. I rolled a 10 and a 1. Anything higher than that? Would have been a... Ooh. Oh, enjoy that, Matt. Oh, my God. I get all my luck back. I get all my magic slots back. I was I was really light. I was running on fumes in there, man. I was worried. I should I take a bunch of updates. I... I try my propeller hat to see if it's working again. It's still not working. Um, everyone gets uh, 1,550 for the kills, plus an extra 50 for the puzzles. 1,200, baby. That would have been 1,600. Yeah, 1,600 each. And then um, who got some cool points? I did. I got two. Uh, I got one cool point. Okay. Coefficients for cool points. Uh, Matt, you got a cool point for the grenade. Oh, excellent. So, Wait, before we go, while we're taking the long rest, just like to note it down in my my notes, but does anyone want to Marlboro when we're hanging out? Nice team um, building. A Marlboro? Yeah, yeah, will you guys want one of Solid Snake's Marlboro Reds? <laughs> Would you share one with Wilbur? Even Wilbur can have one, yeah. He uh, will Wilbur, gladly take one. Wilbur yeah, one. I'll, take a, I'll take one of the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> so we're all sitting around like Solid Snake listening you to our codex. You and uh, Wilbur are splitting one, and the other guys are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm down to I'm down to seventeen then. All right. Okay. Um, and so you multiply your coefficients of the cool points by five. I rolled a five on your G twenties, so okay. five XP. Ten, baby, let's do it. 
And uh, so which way I, I'll prepare for both and I can always use. Um, we said the water. Yeah, we're going to yeah, go think, to water. I mean, unless you guys really want to go see what's deeper in this place. Well, we're, we got to follow Doomhand. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we got to go after Doomhand at this point. He killed my brother! <laughs> Definitely what with that guy. All right, cool. Um, all right, Moses' story has been laid down. So that was my that was my goal. Okay, uh, that's it for today, folks. All right, thank dope. you, Spencer. Yeah, yeah dude, that was awesome. It was tough. Yeah, great, good battle, good battle. I feel like everyone did an equal amount. That's very unusual. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 were focused. We just came together like, usually as a... someone's like missing all their roles or like not doing any damage. Like everyone was like kind of hitting at the same rate. That's, that's I, I feel like it doesn't happen often. I think the butterflies saved Aaron's life, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it was probably. If I had one we're more trying to get rid of the butterflies. I had this this uh drow assassin has an assassination. Um, and if someone hasn't gone uh done their turn. He gets to just go over there and assassinate, which is like a brutal, brutal rolls. Oh, it's but, like double critical. Yeah. God. And I rolled that 20, so I could have. Oh, well, I remember one of the first times the wand was used, created grass underneath a hydra. Oh, yes. And then helped us because we lit it on fire it on and fire. it stopped its regeneration. Yes. Fucking uh, yeah. the wands random ass shit has saved us so much in huge fights. You're gonna have in the, the, in the weirdest ways. <laughs> gonna have the the weirdest weirdest ways. Render the wand useless. Just kidding. Jake, I'll get that wand one way or another. <laughs> <Love that one. laughs> Alright. I get third level spells oh, to go. Oh, this is cool. These are cool spells. Alright, I'll see you guys later.